Chair, present. Said Bremer, Vice Chair, present. Alder Veronica Corpus Dax. She's in the yeah. present. 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 Um, Commissioner Lisa Hansen. Present. Commissioner Jacob Miller. Present. Commissioner Randall Pachowski. Present. And Commissioner Jerry Wisniewski. Present. Next item: approval of the agenda for the February 11, 2019 meeting of the Green Bay Planning Commission. Motion approved. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Wispisky, a second by Commissioner Hansen to approve the agenda. All those <coughs> in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Next item, approval of minutes for the January 7, 2019 meeting of the Green Bay Planning Commission. Motion approved. Second. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Wispisky, a second by Commissioner Hansen. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. Next item, regular business. Item one, consideration of possible mm -hmm. action on a request to authorize a conditional use permit for a shelter facility in an office residential district located at 430 South Clay Street, submitted by Pastor Manuelis Rico, Transformation House of <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a request for a shelter facility, uh, conditional use permit that's required in the office residential district. Uh, the property is located at 430 South Clay Street, and that's highlighted in red here. Uh, East Mason Street, they're just kind of off the map on the south side here, Webster Avenue, right north and south. Um, 430 South Clay is between Crooks and Ch uh, Chicago Street. Um, there is some high density residential to the west of this, uh, two churches to the south, and now it's some low density residential on the east side of this property. Uh, the comprehensive plan recommends high density uh, residential uses here. Um, so the proposed use and the current zoning is in keeping with the city's comprehensive plan. And again, the current zoning is office residential. In this district, uh, shelter facilities are required to obtain a conditional use permit. Um, the Transformation House is the applicant. Um, they began their operations in 2012, I believe. And they began at uh, 436 South Jefferson Street here. And they operated there until about uh, early, I think, 2018. This is right across the street from St. John's, uh, John's Park and St. John's Homeless Shelter. 
2017, uh, they received the conditional use permit for a room in a boarding house at 311 South Jefferson. That's just north of this facility here. Uh, this is across from the police station. Uh, the permit was granted, but they never uh, occupied the site. They failed to fulfill the conditional use permit, and they've abandoned that site. Um, around that time period as well, um, they acquired and are currently using 610 South Broadway, which is the old white store building. Um, they occupy the first floor. I think Brown County Health is a, is a tenant upstairs. Uh, so this is Clinton Street and Mason Street. So their offices, and I believe the ministry, are located at that site. So the plan is to uh, relocate um, or locate um, a shelter facility at 430 South Clay Street, and that's the structure here. Um, this is a three-story uh, brick building, as you can see, built in 1927. It was a former Santa Maria nursing home. Um, so because it's a change of use, we feel, from a nursing home to a, a dormitory or a shelter facility, uh, we require the applicant to contact an architect and kind of go through the building to look at life safety uh, measures. And there was a letter attached from Performa Architects, and they kind of outlined some of the condition of the building and proposed changes to that building to bring it up to code. Um, they also established an occupancy in that building of 46, and that's what we're basing our maximum capacity um, in our conditions tonight. Um, the site's about a half acre in site. They have parking to the south here. It's actually two different lots. Uh, we're going to ask them to combine those lots as part of one of our, one of our conditions. Um, we also asked the applicant to conduct a neighborhood meeting, and that was done on January 15th this past year. Uh, there were nine neighbors that attended that meeting. Um, as part of the enterprise, we did notify property owners within 200 feet of this request. We notified Alderman Galvin, as well as the Navarino Neighborhood Association, which just does impact. Um, as of the drafting of our report, there were two, I guess, calls that I received that had some concerns or questions that were expressed to me. Um, late on Friday, I received a text from a gentleman in the 500 block, and that's attached within your agenda as well, Mr. Larry <coughs> Chairman. We also expressed some concerns about this uh, shelter facility. Um, tonight, staff is recommending approval of the request. We have several conditions. I'm going to kind of go through those one by one. Um, like other shelter facilities, these are kind of very similar. Maybe you've kind of seen some of these before. Um, the first one, A, a maximum capacity of 46 individuals. Uh, there will be no increase in residents unless the Planning Commission and Council would, would review that, but right now it's at 46. Item B, uh, the shelter facility at 430 South Clay is discontinued or the operation is dissolved or if the transformation house no longer operates, the facility uh, shall terminate immediately. So this mm -hmm. is intended for the transformation house period. It's not transferable, it's for the transformation house period. Uh, item C, at the discretion of the Common Council, Planning Commission, or the Development Director, a review may be required by the Planning Commission and Common Council to ensure compliance with this CUP and identify any areas of concern with the rooming, uh, room and boarding the shelter facility um, regarding police calls or inadequate facilities. That's kind of a typical statement you'll see with, uh, or statement, a typical condition on uh, shelter facilities. Uh, item D, mandatory background checks will be required for all residents. Um, Sex offenders are prohibited from this facility as part of this condition. Item E, conform, conformance with the operating plan submitted by the applicant. Uh, there is a copy of that operating plan within your agenda. It's rather lengthy, but uh, nonetheless, it's, it's uh, attached. Item F is kind of a catch-all compliance with all other re regulations of the Green Bay Municipal Code that's not included in these conditions here. I guess we're kind of running off, well, what, two more. Site plan uh, is reviewed by the Community Development Review Team. That's a site plan requirement, and it probably most likely would be a building plan review as well. So it's a change of use. We want to document that as part of the site plan. And just off the end here, just the last one is, again, there are two tax parcels that affect this property, so we want those to be combined to be one campus or one site. So uh, those are our conditions of approval tonight. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Yes, Commissioner Brennan. Paul, um, you mentioned that Performa had done a review of the facility, and I think you said that there were some points at which they uh, were recommending some changes. And I was wondering, does, do any of those show up in the uh, conditions that you are recommending? 
they do not. So we wanted to ensure that that building was going to be safe. Uh, yes. For occupants, <coughs> and we wanted to communicate that to the planning commission and to the council, so they have some understanding that this is, it could be a building that could be used that way. I want to have grant the approval and find out the yes. building can't be used that way. So that was an exercise to find out the compatibility of that use with that building. So <coughs> the suggestions then do not in any way impact safety. It was it was hard to sort out what might be suggestions for future work right. as opposed to I thought it was all just checking off things that were already there. Yeah, I think it's kind of a laundry list and it's it's not a condition requirement, but it is something that'll become part of a building plan review at a later time when they try and gain occupancy in the building. Okay. Okay, thank you. And the second question, um, they have had uh, experience with managing shelters in Green Bay before. Yes. Do we have any information at all about their success rate at doing that? And I guess by success rate here, I mean on the safety issues. Um, I believe, well, the only one I can really speak to, I guess, is 437 South Jefferson, and they received mm -hmm. site plan approval and occupancy in that building. Yes. Uh, as well as 610 South Broadway, but that doesn't have any guests in that, in that building. So, I believe they have a decent track record in being able to perform and provide that uh, occupancy. Okay. And uh, no particular concerns with police calls or anything like that, which you mentioned is something that we often watch for with shelters. We often find with shelters it's very common. I would suspect there would be calls here as well. Mm -hmm. There are calls at the other shelter facilities. I think that's just kind of the uh, nature of things. Okay. But we don't have any specific information. No, I didn't provide any of that. Okay, thank you, Paul. Yep. Is there any further discussion amongst staff? Mm -hmm. Move to open the floor. Second. We have a motion and a second to open the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Is there anybody wishing to speak on this item? Okay, ma'am. May I go first? Yes, would you step up to the podium? Thank you. State your name <coughs> and your address for the record, please. <coughs> I'm very nervous, so just forgive me. We don't find My name is Eileen Fry. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask if I might not be recorded by the television media. Well, that's a public media. I know. Media. Okay. I live at 425 South Clay Street. That is it directly across the street from Santa Maria Nurses Home. I have a copy for you folks and a copy for Mr. Um, Mr. Rako of what I'm going to say tonight. If you would like that, I'll give that to you. And on the cover, it's all handwritten, I'm sorry. I'm not technologically savvy to some degree. Um, those are pictures from outside of my Mr. Rick, you want a copy? It's my living room where I live. And from the front porch. Thank you. Um, and it's a really nice neighborhood. I've been up since about 2, 2 30, 2 23 this morning. Um, I dangled my legs over the side of my bed and I pick up my feet. I'm worried, you see. Ever since we went to the meeting at 430 South Play Street, apparently Transformation House wants to open a transitional home for adult men across from my home. They have to make an introduction, and then an application for a cup permit, a conditional use permit to the city of Green Bay. I didn't know what a cup was, um, so I've been doing a lot of homework. Um, and more investigating than I'm used to doing, but I think it's important. I lived across uh, from 430, South Clay Street since December 30th of 1982. That's 37 years. 
um, we got a HUD permit loan, a HUD loan to build a small home of our own, paying taxes and refinancing all these years, and now it's ours. I think I have the right and obligation to speak my words as to what will or will not take place in my neighborhood. <coughs> Um, I am sad, angry, hurt, and suspicious. I'm hurt that I didn't know what might be happening over there. Sad because it's a thing that might need be needed in our community. Mm -hmm. Angry because the questions I asked don't give the ans any answers, and suspicious because of the veiled answers to my questions that tell me that there might be something that's not quite right. I may have another 20 years to live and pay more my taxes on a property that may not mean much to this gathering tonight. But it's those 20 years left and just under $3,000 a year of taxes and 37 years that we've already paid taxes to the city of Green Bay that give me a voice in this conversation. Those tax dollars have and will pay for safety, water, sewer, gas, electricity, <coughs> communication lines, paved streets, and local governance and other services I've agreed to to live in my community. There is and now is, there is and is now increasing a large swath of property that is tax exempt in my community. The properties that I know of that are tax exempt take up a large footprint in my neighborhood. Some are religious and some will now be nonprofit if I understand correctly. If I understand it, those properties do and will build benefit from my little taxes. And I do believe that I have a particular right to be apprised as to what's going on in my neighborhood. From the first meeting at 430 South Quay, I asked many questions but those only gave me veiled answers. I understand that it's a men only. Some will be from prison, vetted of course. Some might be from out of town. Some might be from out of state. No sexual offenders, no alcohol, no drugs. No violent offenders was a question I had. All are to be vetted as to their willingness to change their lives to transform. Monies. I thought it was $75 a week. I guess it might be $85 per man. Each man must get a job, must complete a GED, and then I have questions about food. It was pretty iffy on this because I might not have asked my questions to the liking of the one who was giving the answers. So I said, will you be feeding these men? Answer was, we aren't using the kitchen at this time. Will you be? Are you for food safety certified? I know I am. That was my business. And what about the soup kitchen? Are you going to sell barbecue and fish fry plates like it said on your website? Like you did at the Jefferson Street House? The answer, no, not at this time. But of course you aren't going to do it at this time. You have no clients my assumption is. 
Transformation House, as I understand, has no clients in-house at the moment. What happened to the place on Jefferson Street? Transformation House is not there. Where did you house your clients when you left? Paul kind of told me that there was a temporary place that didn't work out by the police department. The current address at 610 South Broadway houses not only Transformation House Incorporated, but also Faith Tabernacle <coughs> Outreach Ministries and, <coughs> and Mr. Rako's contract of business. <coughs> What was the outcome <coughs> of the cup permit from 2017's application? Paul Neumeyer seemed to be the person working with Mr. Rako, and from what I understand was recommending rezoning of the Broadway address from general commercial and light industrial to office residential that would allow for the shelter why or what happened with that application? These are questions and I haven't had time to get answers. Now, we have five plats of property involved. Transformation House has uh, uh, acquired 430, 440, 444 South Clay Street. 1017 Chicago Street and 1021 Chicago Street. It's not just that one portion there that Transformation House Incorporated has already purchased. <coughs> Transformation House Incorporated, according to the tax parcel, from the February 2019 Green Bay website. That means that Transformation House Incorporated has gone ahead of getting a required conditional <coughs> use permit, which Mr. Paul Neumeyer told me over the phone that the city does not recommend purchase of properties before obtaining cup permits that it would be discouraged in doing so. So, the land use classification seems to be on the papers that I was able to research a B mercantile. I don't know what that means. On 0.438 acres, just those first two addresses, the parking lot and the building, at a current unofficial valuation of $628,000 and a gross tax for this year of $15,840.50. The reference document I have is 2847958. And so I do not have the tax rolls for the other three houses that I assume will be tax exempt as well. I don't know because I don't have an answer to that. I would like to ask the council to either deny or delay the cut permit for Transformation House Incorporated. One, because what, I, what was told to us at the January meeting is now different. It has changed from a transitional facility of 40 plus beds to an expectation of expanding to a proposed overnight facility of 100 plus beds, as reported from Channel 11 news interviews that Mr. Rako made. I had he had the information stayed at the 40-some bed transitional facility, I might have found a way to accept Transformation House into my neighborhood. But, I'm sorry, I will not accept an overnight facility of over 100 beds in my neighborhood, period. 
We have other resources in this wonderful community of mine to answer a lot of needs. What I want, what I really want, is to enjoy my neighborhood. I want to sell my home when I'm ready to. I want to be active in seeing the, and seeing the decline of the drug dealing, the fights, the violence, the sexual assault, loud noise complaints, sex for sale in my neighborhood, drunken men and drugged women walking. And one of the most, this is going to be hard, I want to see a decline from one of the most mm, gut-wrenching days of my life. I'm sorry. Hearing a young woman in the summer screaming and crying because she had no idea where the hell she was. Walking in front of my house. She'd been drugged. She'd been to a house party down the street and been drugged and woke to no memory of what happened to her. No purse, no phone, new to town, worked at a pizza place on the west side, only knew how to get home <coughs> from her workplace. She could only direct me from her workplace as I drove her. She did not want me to take her to the police station and I, as, as I insisted, so I drove her. I drove past the police station hoping she'd change her mind. <clears throat> Once we got to Dousman Street, she had just moved here from Michigan. I dropped her at the front door. She ran fast into the house. I took down the address, drove to the police <coughs> station, and reported what had happened. They did a welfare check and called and told me she refused to make a report. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what happened to her while she was unconscious? I can. Because has something very similar happened to me when I was her age? She could only direct me. How uh, is the repeat? Sorry machine ate my copy. So, I'm doing what I can. I do not want more heart-wrenching days like that in my neighborhood. There has been a decline in how my neighborhood has changed. I've seen it. It's there. It's happening because we care. The neighbors care. But I don't want any more heart-wrenching days. I don't want a homeless shelter in my front yard. And I know that's so cliche nowadays. I'll be criticized from here to Timbuktu about it. You can paint me as the crazy lady of uh, Clay Street if you like, that's okay. All I want is peace and quiet to sit on my beautiful front porch watch my perennial garden delight people walking by, give a flower to a young boy who wants to pick one without permission, by the way, on his way home from house school, my childhood school, to take home if he promises to give it to his mother. I stopped there, but I thought one more thing at 2.23 in the morning with my legs over the side of my bed and I looked at the outline of my feet and I started to remember every step I've taken in my life from 617 South Madison Street where I grew up until today. I can walk this town. I can skate this town. I can ride my bike or my trike on this t in this town. I've driven this town up and down the whole area, only left for a few years and came back. 
someday I'm going to be buried here. So no one will remember the crazy cat lady on the little house on Clay Street. I don't want any more trouble. <coughs> Mr. Rico, I know you mean well, and I know it's a need. I don't want any more trouble. I just want to do my best, moment to moment. I care. I care too much. Just too much. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anybody else to listen? Yes. Yes, please. Uh, Bill Galvin, Alderman, 4th District. Um, I've had a few calls, a few emails. Um, I've made a few notes. And I apologize. I'm going to have to leave right after this. I have another appointment. I have to be at by 7 o'clock. Uh, I've talked to many concerned residents about uh, Pastor Rico's uh, proposal. Many have lived here 50 years or more, some have lived here for far less. Um, they're fairly new to the neighborhood. Uh, there's been some deterioration in the neighborhood, but recently, uh, through the efforts of uh, organizations like Habitat for Humanity, uh, NeighborWorks, and citizens that want to take advantage of living in the near downtown area and the amenities that it uh, <coughs> offers, there's been a resurgence in this neighborhood both of young families and the quality and conditions of life. Um, I've met with uh, Pastor Rico one-on-one uh, -on -one for quite a bit of time, and uh, he sounds like he has a solid program that he wants to help people in our community. Um, but we have to understand that for many years, uh, the facility was run as a nursing home, and that's what the neighbors are used to. They're used to a very quiet neighborhood, not a lot of commotion, uh, they enjoy seeing the young families walking around, things like that. <coughs> um, <coughs> and there's other organizations within our community that are doing some of the very same things. You know, NEW, St. John's, uh, Freedom House. And, and people, I think, are just starting to realize the depth of homelessness and some of the issues that it brings, not only in our community, but through our nation. And it has to be addressed. You know, myself personally, although I, I commend Reverend Rico for what he's doing. I would have loved to have seen this historic building turned into apartments or condos you know, to continue that tax base going in our community. But I understand that he's bought the property. This is what he wants to do. And, and if uh, this committee sees fit to grant the cup, that he's going to do the best he can with it. But again, we have concerns as neighbors. I mean, all we're hearing about from 46 to over 100 beds. And one thing I've become kind of tired of in this community is people who ask for forgiveness instead of asking for permission. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's things like that that this committee has to take in consideration as this cup moves forward. Um, some of the things I'm concerned about are um, security. You know, St. John's has a program working with the Green Bay Police Department to vet residents and to report any interactions or anything that goes wrong so that there's a constant record of that. And I would hope as uh, Pastor Rico moves forward with this, that with his operating plan, he thinks about things like that. Are there going to be individuals watching the facility at night to make sure that the gentlemen that are staying there stay there? Uh, are there going to be security cameras? Um, is there going to be, what kind of parking is there going to be? These Obviously they're working, many of them are going to have cars. Is the parking lot going to be adequate to hold those vehicles? Or are we going to start finding them parked on the streets or in other people's parking lots? Um, there's a lot of things out there that I haven't thought of, and I'm sure a lot of these residents have thought of. And so I hope this committee, as, as we're sitting here, they can come up with some suggestions, either A, to be included in the cup, or to be included in Reverend Rico's operating plan. Thank you. I'm my name is Brandy Sanders. I live at 1112 Crook Street, retired law enforcement for 22 years. Um, the little girl right here in the second row, the reason why I'm here, the other little kids here, I don't think that it's safe to put this in the neighborhood. These kids are used to walking through the church park, taking a walk around the block with their pets, 
I will not let them know. If this happens, you will see a for sale sign with 1112 Crook Street. I will guarantee you, and there will be many numerous neighbors that will do the same. I do not like the idea. I don't think that it's appropriate for the residential neighborhood. I hope it doesn't happen, because a lot of people are going to sell their houses. That's all I have to say. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is William Hart. I'm the owner of the property, the 114 unit uh, mm -hmm. complex that sort of borders surrounds the property. Um, <coughs> I've had the property <coughs> about four years and uh, we uh, we had a challenge. The property is, is a beautiful old stately property that had been uh, underserviced, undermanaged, as they tell the police officers who supported me in my efforts. You know, it's, it's bad management, it's not a bad building. And uh, I tried to reach out to the neighbors as I've seen them. I keep an apartment on the property. Um, I, I have uh, residents and family in Madison, but I, I spend substantial time in Green Bay and intend to spend more. I've liquidated assets elsewhere. I have two core properties. Um, so as a businessman, I can juggle and be in two places <coughs> at once. Uh, not really, but uh, the point. Uh, so what I'm here to tell you is that we're a work in progress. And uh, I have uh, police call records to, to, to bear that out. Um, we've, uh, we, we have a community. We have a, we are known, we know our tenants. I mean, I have technically homeless people in my building that can't pay rent. I self-fund that, I do that. Um, I, I, I tremendously respect the Reverend for what he does. I, I get it, I, I know what people need. You know, as I said to the Reverend, we can't, we can't judge people for their mistakes. We have to give people opportunities and a hand to move forward. However, from a business standpoint, you know, is this a benefit to the city? The points that, that, that were so eloquently made is that what about property values and what about our reasonable expectations going forward that the, the, the use plans and zonings are set? I mean, if we change the rules mid-game, I mean, people in, in, in these houses are, are solid middle-class <coughs> people. They, they don't have the liquidity, perhaps, to take a hit on, on selling their property at a discount and relocating. <coughs> this is home. And, uh, you know, uh, so we meet a criteria about our reasonable expectations for us and balance that against is this a benefit to the city? And I'd very humbly say no. I, I, I'm all for a project and to help people, but let's, let, let's, let's really think this through and get into a, a good and right location. Um, there's a perfect example that I would cite in Madison where there are two very recent uh, homeless shelters built. One on the east side that's in a commercial area, has problems, has challenges, but it doesn't have the problems that rise to the level of the west side project that is of 47 units. Now I see some similarities, 47 unit, 47 person, uh, they're on they had 47 police calls and as of the 18th of December, just for the month of December. And, and, and it, it's heartbreaking what it's doing to the neighborhood, and this has started only this past June. Uh, I, I just caution you that, as with apartment owners, it's not the building, it's the management. And, and, and take a good hard look at what kind of plan is going to be implemented to move forward. You know, I'm sorry uh, that, that we didn't get some kind of a performance record about the operators. I think that's fair that they should be commended or held accountable for past performance. Future is going to be a reflection of past, you know. Uh, but I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you very much. Yes, My name is Michael Pickard. I live at 429 South Clay Street, directly across from 
the uh, facility. I moved there in uh, 1998, so I've been there. I'm going on my 21st year. When I first moved in the, in the neighborhood, uh, there were a number of problems. There was drug houses, uh, problems with uh, vagrant people, transitional people, and in these 20 years, the neighborhood has gotten increasingly better. There's been, I believe, six houses tore down in that neighborhood because they were declared a nuisance by the police department. And a couple of them were, the lots were purchased by private individuals who built new houses on that. Habitat for Humanity has built three houses there. Uh, and my concern, one of my concerns is, is, is this going to send the neighborhood back in the other direction? Uh, that's, uh, I think, a legitimate concern because, uh, you know, I'm now retired. I, I enjoy the neighborhood and I've been fixing up my house. About every five years, I take on a new project and uh, do something with the house. I've. Uh, Three years ago, I put in a new bathroom. Uh, my next project is, if I can get the VA loan, I'm going to rewire the house. Uh, my garage was, started out as a chicken coop. <laughs> and I had tore that down and put up a shed. Now, I, I, I'm making my property better. And with the money I'm putting into my property, is that now going to be money lost because of a decrease in the value. Uh, I spoke to uh, Reverend Rico when he had his meeting and I told him that uh, I can understand the need for that facility that uh, for a number of reasons. One, I'm a Vietnam vet and I know that there's a big problem with homeless veterans. Uh, I'm a recovering alcoholic. <coughs> and I know the reasons why they need facilities to help these alcoholics. Uh, I volunteered at St. John's Homeless Shelter for three years. I, uh, I ran their uh, AA program at St. John's for three years. So I, uh, I understand what the need is for this. I'm just not sure that this is the area for it. Uh, when it was just going to be the, the old nursing home, which before that was uh, a uh, dormitory for the uh, sisters that worked at St. Mary's Hospital. Uh, so that, that building has got a long historic good use to it. The, uh, the apartment complex that's on Webster and, and Crook Street had been a real problem. The police calls there were numerous. There was lots of disturbances in the neighborhood and, and uh, as the uh, the gentleman who spoke over there who now has it he's turning that facility around the uh, the numbers of disturbances and police calls have gone down uh, significantly and I'm sure uh, being a former police officer himself uh, Mr. Glavin can attest to that so I'm not against the type of facility and I know you know, there's, there's the old saying, you know, not in my backyard. But I just think that this is not the proper facility for a residential area. You know, I don't know where in Green Bay they could put it. Uh, you know, the facility on Broadway, although it's not big enough, is that's, I would think, is a fairly decent area. But no matter where they put it, there's going to be opposition. So I just hope that you guys can take into consideration uh, the residents of this neighborhood which have seen it improve and prosper over the last the 20 years that I've been there. So uh, that's basically <coughs> what I got to say. Sir. <coughs> Good evening. 
My name is Larry Geal, and uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of my parents, Larry and Judy Geal. They live at 515 South Clay. You do have a text message from my father. He is a retired deputy chief of the Green Bay Police Department, and they have been uh, residents in this home for 50 plus years. I myself grew up in this home. Um, my parents asked that I indicate that they oppose the approval of the cup permit. Um, I agree with what Alderman uh, Galvin had previously stated. Uh, one grave concern we have is that um, across the street is St. Paul's Church <coughs> and School. Paul indicated there's two churches in the neighborhood. He did not indicate that there is an elementary school uh, with, with quite a few children obviously coming and going, both for school and for church. We also have um, classes at night that the, the buildings occupied and we have concern of the safety in that regard. I do further understand <coughs> that this committee has limited ability to deny this permit, uh, but what you can do is place certain conditions on the utilization of this property that would adequately protect not only the individuals of the school and church, but also the residents that are here speaking today, including my parents. We're talking about an older neighborhood. I 100% agree that this has transformed over the years. Uh, I myself, am 50 years old, was born in this house and uh, have watched the neighborhood go from uh, uh, normal family uh, situations where people had phased out and it turned over into, especially on Chicago Street, into re uh, rental properties. And that sense has really turned around. Our block is original uh, residents that were there since I was born, uh, and, and some of them are here today and continue to, to occupy that spot. But it's really taken a, a positive turn um, as, you, as you proceed down Chicago Street and away from the church. So what, some of the things that, that I would hope that you'd consider um, with this cup application and limitations, restrictions, mirror somewhat what Alderman Galvin had indicated, but I'd even expand on it more. I certainly understand that the architectural <coughs> firm looked at this and Paul did not include any of the um, code violations that exist. It's an old building, 1922, and I personally believe if you're going to house 46, and I understand one of the conditions that Paul also stated was anything in excess would come back to this committee, but I'm going to assume the worst that this is going to end up to be upwards of 100, that this building better remain in compliance and with code and, and not in violation thereof. And I'd ask that that be a condition of occupancy that this building be brought to code. Secondly, I'd like you to limit occupancy as to the beds. Um, I'd like this committee to look at the, the report from the architecture and, and make sure that 46, in fact, uh, is appropriate and, and not exceed that amount in, in such a neighborhood. Um, drugs and alcohol should be forbidden on this property. This is uh, an indication of individuals that are going through some tough times and are, are trying to trans, uh, uh, transfer into, into community, including felons. Um, and, and we don't need to have anything that, that may spark controversy or, or problems with, with police visits and uh, issues with, with our premises, my parents' premises <coughs> specifically. Uh, Alderman Galvin talked about a security plan and security cameras, and I absolutely agree with him on that. And I think that uh, they should have to present an adequate security plan. I know there's significant problems uh, around around um, some of the homeless shelters with the neighboring properties. And uh, I think we, we owe it to the elementary <coughs> school and the churches as well as the residents that they feel safe in their home. Um, we've, we've heard about concerns living directly across the street and having those fears. I certainly echo what Alderman Galvin indicated as to an on-site manager. We don't know who's staying on this premises. Are these 46 individuals that, that are free at night to come and go as they please, or is there somebody there that's managing the situation on a 24-7 basis? Uh, again, we, we need to ensure the safety of 
those around and that somebody's looking after those residents. And finally, as Paul indicated, there will be no sex offenders. Um, that's because it's within the certain yardage of the elementary school and the church. So by law, they cannot occupy that premises. But what are we gonna do? And I'd ask that you place in the cup um, specifically some adequate remedies to ensure that those individuals are in fact um, not sex offenders. I don't think a background check is enough. Um, people are gonna come and go. And simply submitting background checks, uh, how, how do you verify? Uh, true verification may be daily checklists uh, through the Green Bay Police Department are working something out similar to St. John's as to who those residents would be and ensuring that uh, sex offenders aren't in violation of statute and allow or ordinance allowed within um, the premises of, of the elementary school. With that, I thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. uh, please, uh, uh, this is an important neighborhood. Um, been around a long time, and uh, it means a lot to people. So, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Mary, and I live in the neighborhood. I live at the Regency East Apartments, and I've just recently become the apartment manager. I have a list of 41 of our residents here. That's all I could get to today. To sign a petition that says they oppose the transformation home. Uh, I had one little lady, she invited me into her house. She takes care of her great-grandchild. And she brought up something that nobody's brought up yet, which is all the parks in the neighborhood that she can bring her kids to, or her great-grandchild to, and not have to worry about anything. Um, we've done a lot at the Regency East Departments. I see, hi <laughs> Liam. I see some of my residents here. We've tried very hard to, um, you know, do complete background checks. I am an on-site manager, I live there. So, um, I guess, I'm emotional too because this is where I live. I've lived here five years, in the neighborhood 40 years. <coughs> so, please listen to all these people, especially you, I appreciate what you had to say. And yeah, thank you. Could I ask? Sure. Uh, pardon me. You mentioned your petition of residents. Are those residents at Regency East? Yeah. Or, okay, specifically yeah. that location. And can you tell us where that particular location is? We are at... <laughs> yeah, it's always fun to figure out these maps. 409 South Webster, that's our parking lot. Uh -huh. So here, 409 and 433, we have 114 units. Right. They're okay. family. Wondering Most of them are two bedrooms, so we've got a lot of families. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Yeah. Oh, Hi, my name is Tanisha Johnson. I attend uh, Faith Tabernacle Church. That is my pastor. Um, I have been a, in a, a member of the church for about approximately nine years, my husband and myself. Um, I was around with Pastor and his wife when Transformation House first became into existence. Um, I understand and uh, hear everyone's concern, but uh, what I want to say and what I find a little distressing is that everyone or uh, many of you are under the assumption that these men are degenerates or vagrants or um, um, alcoholics or, or drug dealers or drug users or sex offenders or whatever. While that may be um, a good, uh, a small portion of the homeless or uh, the population for men who, or who need help, that's not the uh, entire uh, scope of the people that Transformation House helps. So I would like for people to keep that in mind. And one thing I, I just want to say, you know, I understand, uh, you know, that this is a 
family neighborhood or whatever have you. But um, as you stated yourself, um, you are tired of seeing the sexual assaults, the young ladies walking around drug, the drug dealers, the, the, the many problems that plague all, a lot of the neighborhoods with this recent uh, opioid boom. Um, <coughs> so I feel that this type of facility is necessary. It's not a facility that is like St. John's or any of the other ones that were named Freedom House or whatever have you. This facility uh, makes men, it holds men accountable. They, they have things to lose if they mess up or step out of line. They have something to lose. It's not a flop house. It's not some, somewhere they just come and spend a night, drop the bags off. Uh, no accountability whatsoever. These men are held extremely accountable. So I just wanted to just put that out there because I understand a lot of the concerns. I really do. I understand that. But I just wanted to, 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 to let it be known that it's not a, a, a we don't just serve as degenerates or, or whatever have you. I don't know what the idea is, but that's the temperature that seems to be in this room. Um, okay, but, but that's, that's basically what I want to say. What, what, what I wanted to uh, make known and make clear that uh, according to your eloquent <coughs> speech here, that something like that is a necessary thing in this very neighborhood. Thank you. My name is Lori Smith, <coughs> excuse me, and I live at the Regency. I've lived there seven years, and, and yes, they've done a great job with improving in, the, in our specific building and the other building that I rent in. Um, my concern, I, I know I appreciate what you want to do. There is a need for it. I truly understand. However, I'm concerned for myself. I have a daughter who still lives with me. I have three grandchildren that come to see me pretty regularly. We go outside and play in the back, the little area, the little grass area. We would not be able to do that now. We do picnics, blow bubbles, ball. We, can't, we won't be able to do that with the increase of people that are going to be in this building. Um, there are a lot of people in the Regency, like I said, 114 units. If you add the proposal I saw was 100, potentially 100 people here. That's a lot of people right in those three buildings there. So my concern is safety. I do agree that there's a need, and I do commend you on that. However, I'm not, not in my backyard, which is my backyard. It would be right in my backyard. You know, and I do commend you. I do commend you. There is a need for it. And the, pe the men that you're going to be helping, they need to be commended as well. But I'm, I'm concerned for myself. I, I won't be able to take the kids out in the back to play anymore. Um, that's, that's my main concern. My name is Larry Fry. I live directly across the street uh, from uh, the former nursing home. Um, I think as I, I could speak for a lot of the neighbors is that one of our concerns was that we were really surprised about how, how all of this came about. We only heard that the nursing home was closing sometime this fall and before we knew it, um, it had changed hands and uh, uh, become uh, part of the uh, Transformation House <coughs> Incorporated. Um, when we had our neighborhood meeting, it was not terribly well publicized and not terribly well attended. Uh, we were kind of gobsmacked to find out that they had already purchased the property. Um, and if I were a cynical person, I would think that, um, uh, that there was already an arrangement in place for a conditional use permit. If I was a cynical person, uh, I would think that there was uh, that what the neighbors said and what the neighbors concerns were that it would make no difference because the conditional use permit would already be, already be uh, arranged. Um, <coughs> as a businessman, I can't imagine purchasing a property of this <coughs> half million dollar plus property and not having the proper permits in place beforehand. Um, I trust the committee will do its job and listen to the concerns of the neighborhood. Um, as, as a homeowner directly across the street, I'm concerned, of course, 
about how this affects property values in the neighborhood. Uh, like the other neighbors, the neighborhood has been increasing, uh, in, improving in quality. Uh, there's been a lot of investments. Uh, we worked hard to maintain our property and to make it look as good as possible. Um, I'm not a rich man. I can't afford to lose my equity in my house. And I hope you all take that into account. Thank you. Yeah. Could you point out where your house is, please? Uh, my house is... Uh, yep. I think you have it. Right here. Right here. That's it. Right out my front window, I see it every day. Be it's a beautiful, distinctive neighbor neighborhood uh, structure. It's a gorgeous place, and I'm looking for the, the best possible use for it. Good evening, I'm um, Pastor Rico, um, uh, the director of the Transformation House. Uh, in um, 2012, we opened up the Transformation House at 436 South Jefferson. And there was concerns about <coughs> the men who we housed. Um, by it, um, bringing down the neighborhood, there, there's, uh, there's concerns about um, drugs, alcohol, uh, sex offenders, and all that. And there was a, uh, and individuals came in and made their concerns known. Um, but actually, what we did, we, we made the neighborhood better. Um, um, at 436, South Jefferson, we have the homeless shelter, St. John's right across the street. <coughs> we have the park right across the street. We have a elementary school right across in front. And we have never had any problems from 2012 to last year. Uh, matter of fact, we, we we transforms a lot of things. We start. We do uh, community events like be the homeless barbecue, where the whole neighborhood come out and get to know each other and the homeless. And uh, it's open to the public. We do that every year at St. John's Park. Um, we uh, we uh, um, uh, stay in contact with the pastor of St. John's. We we. Um, the, one of the women that came and made a complaint, she came back six months later and um, she um, said she recanted that she um, was surprised. She was overexcited about us being in it because there was a traffic of dope things and alcoholics coming right down behind the 436 uh, South Jefferson building. We closed it off. We, we um, transform it. One thing about the transformation house is that these men are screened before they come in. These men, they have to be really ready to change their life around. Um, um, there's, there's, um, uh, it's, it's very structured. It's, it's all about accountability. It's all about stability. The man come in um, to the transformation house. He has to be alcohol and drug free. And every um, once in a while, if he's convincing, he had a drink. Um, um, <coughs> I may <coughs> let him in, but. The next chance I can get him to take a drug test, he better be positive, he better be um, negative, and, and then from then on. Um, we do breathalyzers every day. And if we suspect anything, we have the thing in our hand, we go around and blow. Blow. We do, we do <coughs> drug testing. Um, um, if you have anything in your system, the guys at the transformation house can e cannot even have 
um, prescribed from the adopted pain fields. Pain fields. <coughs> they can't be there. They, they're, uh, they're, 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 this, this shot you take for heroin that will help get over it, it comes up positive. Can you take that? Um, the, the transformation house is not a treatment center. Um, what we do is we take men, uh, house men, that who's really ready to change and get their life back in order. Uh, these men, um, although some come from prison, we get a lot of guys referred to their probation and parole officers, but we tell probation and parole officers what type of men that we house. And so there's a screening um, at the Transformation House. First thing I ask them, do you believe in God? You know. Because the Transformation House is a faith-based facility. We have a, um, a weekly <coughs> class called Tada, Transformation of Alcohol and Drug Abusers. And it's, 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 um, it's a 12-step program. And it requires all the guys to do homework. So they got to study, they got to write pages, uh, we go over and we talk about it every week. Um, there's a house meeting that we talk about all types of different issues. <coughs> you know, there's a lot of issues that us men, we go through, we do men talk. Um, there's a um, 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 case manager that every man had to, um, um, uh, once a week, sit down with the case manager. It's mandatory. Um, if they don't have a uh, high school diploma, um, they need to be working on getting one to stay at Transformation House. So we don't have guys to get the diplomas, went on to T T uh, uh, NWTC um, um, uh, to get the, the, the um, the GED and go to school. <coughs> you know, we got guys coming back with their certificates. We got guys at the Transformation House who um, they say, well, we just need a good, healthy place to stay. So St. John's Homeless Shelter got all types of individuals coming from all over. <coughs> um, new community shelter, we got guys coming in. It's this been coming through there for years. Um, at the Transformation House, it's no picking on nobody. There's no game plan. We got all 30 guys in the building, and I ask you, do you listen, listen, do you hear? It's quiet. <coughs> we, don't do that, we don't do that running, uh, hollering, and cussing, and all that kind of stuff. You know, one thing about it, they have to respect the building. You know, and if they can't respect the building, they can't be there. We, we, they, everybody has chores to do. They have to make sure the grounds is, is <coughs> outside is clean, on the inside is clean, everybody got a chore to do. <coughs> although, although that building is an old building, let me tell you something, it's a very sound building. It's, it's the, the architect that we have, performer, they, he went through the whole thing. Um, uh, he did, a, a, he's, he's one of the best in his field. Um, the, the, as far as um, qualifications of the building standards, I think what we're doing, and I know it's, it's, it's much lower than the, the nursing home. Um, in the transformation house, the men, 11 o'clock at night, everybody had to be in their room. The lights is out at, at, at 10.30. All the lights is out. You know, you got guys um, that's coming in from work, they might, they like, might be on, but other than that, the lights is out. Um, I see Outside, I know it's going to be challenging because in the parking lot there, um, when we first started coming around, 
we see guys hanging out in that parking lot. A lot of in our property, in our in, on, throughout the back, they use <coughs> this is our property. They, this is their avenue coming to their property, their parking lot. So there's a lot of people coming through there, and they're 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 drinking, they're doing all kind of stuff. We sit, you know. So, but our guys, if I ever catch one of our guys out there drinking or doing, they out. They out of the program immediately, you know. So, so, are you really ready to change your life around? There's some some men in here in Green Bay that's looking for a chance. You know, they 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 looking for um, um, a way out. They 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 looking for say yes, you made a mistake. <coughs> you know. Um, and I'm pretty sure everybody in here did something. Just didn't get caught. You know, some everybody did. You know, when you did it, do I crucify you? You know, do I give you a chance? You know, a lot of these guys, they 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 they, they ready to change. They're getting their life together. They've been going in and out of new community shelter for years, but they come to the transformation house and say, this is the first time I had a job this long. And I can't even remember. I'm sober. They look in like you got a guy that you couldn't even see him look like a, a monster. You know, his hair and this, you know, first thing you do when you come in the transformation house, you got clean up. You know, everybody got to shave every day. You gotta look nice and decent every day. You don't just come looking wild and stuff. So we believe that um, you gotta dress. You know, with, you know, you know when when you look at me, that first appearance means a whole lot. And the guys that come through the transformation house, when you sit back and say that I came from, the, I'm from, I'm staying at the transformation house, they can see. It. They can tell, you know, you know, we we all about making a change. We all about the community. You know, I understand what you feel. You 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 you're saying, and then like you said that the the other houses. We got the other houses, the other three houses. I'm working on the house. I'm fixing them up. We getting ready to redo the outside, the the paint, and the painting. These guys in there, they got to do community service. Everybody got to do something. We, we go all about fixing up the neighborhood. Matter of fact, I was thinking about myself moving into one of the houses when the lady moved out. I wanted that house. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> you know, so um, 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 I just want you to understand that we feel you. That's why we're doing what we're doing. And, and the guys, I'm gonna tell you something, when they come out of the transformation house, they're much better than when they came in. You know, we have housed over 680 guys, and we have 80% uh, from homeless to independent living. And I think that's good. You know, these guys are out there actually, they proud of having their own places of staying and doing what they gotta do. And so for the, the 100 people coming in and out, that it's, it's 46. You said on your television. Well, there, there's, there's the, the, on, the, on the television there is, and that's way in the future, and just like you heard Paul said earlier, it all has to come back to this point right here again before that even take place of anything like that you know so you know and and I've been complying with it um, all the everyone he told me 200 and 500 feet from the building I sent I walked myself around the neighborhood and passed it up flyers and everyone I met who stayed in the neighborhood I told them what we was doing um, so we're not trying to 
um, uh, surprise you guys or anything like that. You know, we're trying to be upfront with everything. And um, um, back in um, 2006, me and um, my wife, she was at Brown County Jail doing Bible studies. And I, I had a construction company going. As a matter of fact, I was a, a chattel on the chattel, the neighborhood chattel. And, and we was, I was doing the house, that 1138 Bay Street house. And <coughs> I'm like, I need some help. So <coughs> I started getting the guys that's in the neighborhood that wasn't working. Uh, I go down there to, 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 the, to the jail. Uh, she do the Bible study and I go in there and ask the guys and come find out that there was little or no resources for the men that come down. And when they do come out, they was crucified. You know, I, I never understood that um, um, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, once a, um, um, you get in trouble once, you just brand it for the rest of your life. You know, <clears throat> you know, people make mistakes. I have a guy there who, who um, him and his family was doing good. Um, one day, they told him he didn't have a job. He couldn't fend for his, his, his family. His, his wife was on him. She was threatening him, uh, you know, uh, leaving him, talking about the lights. The lights were getting ready to get turned off. Um, they getting ready to get evicted out of their apartment and everything. He's in a stressful situation and he ain't had nowhere to turn. So he went out and did something crazy. He went and took something that wasn't his. Got caught. Went to prison for it. It came out, he was angry. You know, he was just trying to take care of himself. This is not what he do. He was trying to make sure his kids eat. He was trying to make sure his kids had lights. You know, and I know you know, maybe not to that extent. We all have done, uh, some of us have done some things or worked some jobs that we really didn't like to do or didn't want to do, you know. Uh, you know, I don't think going out there breaking the law is, is right. But some people find themselves in that situation and they feel sorry for it. And they want to change, they want to give back they want to turn their life around. And we are there to say that, listen, I know you made a mistake, but I love you. And the reason why I say that is because I was, I was an alcoholic at one time. I did drugs at one time. And one time, and, and I got tired. I got tired of being tired. And I, 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 I pulled out of my pocket this card I got from a bishop. And I called the bishop up and I, he said, Come on down to the church. Went down to the church and I was ready. I listened to every word. It seemed like something happened to me. And when I left out of there, the taste of alcohol was gone. <clears throat> I came back the next Sunday. The taste of drugs was gone. I came back the next Sunday. Cigarettes was gone. And I said, wow, what just happened? I said, wow, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. I know some might not believe the way I believe, but I believe that it was a spiritual, something happened to me, and I just wanted to know what it was. You know, and, and, and from that point on, all I want to do is just give back, because God gave me a second chance on life. I've been to detox twice. Um, I went to, I was in AA for years, <coughs> for years. And once I was delivered, he's my AA, he's, 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 he's my everything, you know, so I haven't had a drink or did any drugs in 20 some years, you know, and so I believe that it's, 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 it's all about a spiritual empowerment. We go to, to AA and NA to talk about the higher power. 
And so at the Transformation House, I sit back and say, do you believe in God? I say, because that's who's going to help you. And so the probation and parole officers, they know about it. Our policy, our structuring, and they tell the clients and, 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 and everybody that comes through, 600, it well, it's been over, since we housed 680, but it was more. We tell them where we stand. We house, there's some of them are Muslims, some of them are atheists, and some of them, but we don't care who or what background it is. We still have <coughs> the same love. <coughs> you know? And so, in being in this neighborhood, we're going to also show love back to the neighborhood. You know, it's all about um, um, building up the neighborhood. And we're, gonna, we're willing to work with. But I got uh, Minister um, CJ over here. He's, uh, I heard somebody talking about statistics. Um, he has put together um, all the statistics of our performance. Um, we keep records of everything. Um, we're we're uh, we're um, members of United Way. We are we are um, members of uh, Feed America. Um, so um, so you were talking about the food. We get so much food in there. We don't know what to do with it. Um, we are we are uh, uh, GFS. Um, they 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 became uh, ambassadors with us. And so twice a week, they just like want to just, just flood us down. Um, um, so we have, we have to s stop, you know, um, <coughs> taking in so much, you know, um, because there's an overwhelming amount of people that are sowing to special food, clothes, um, and, and want to help these men to get back on their feet. Um, um, while I'm here, Anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes, Commissioner mm Hanson. -hmm. So, just a quick question about someone had brought up parking situation. It looks like there's driveways on both sides of the building. Are there parking lots on both sides as well? And yes. do you see it feel that that's going to be adequate for your purposes with 46? Yes. Okay. Yes. On on we have a um, smaller parking lot at. Um, uh, 436 and at that facility we house 30 guys mm -hmm. um, and so um, this one here is um, 16 more with additional parking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, excuse mm -hmm. you, you just said 16 more than sorry mm -hmm. oh um, I have a couple questions that I wanted to make sure I was clear about. Um, Ms. Fry, I really appreciated how much you care about the neighborhood, and I heard that from many other speakers tonight. Uh, and I appreciate especially the way you wrapped up uh, Pastor Rico in saying that it's a matter of loving the neighborhood as well as the, the people in, in Transformation House. Um, but there's some some points at which things can be easily misunderstood. And one of them for me was the notion of the soup kitchen, the community uh, closet, the barbecue, the fish, fish fry, the food pantry. Is the, It begins to sound like um, a kind of general store mm -hmm. with a lot of people coming in and out, um, a lot of noise, things happening. Um, how do those fit into your plans? Well, at 436 South Jefferson, we mm -hmm. did do a soup kitchen. Um, and we did do a food pantry. Mm -hmm. um, at this point right now, at the Clay Street property, our concern is um, with the guys having a good program with the guys. Um, our, in our future, we, we're going to keep our um, Feed the Homeless Barbecue. 
which we do in St. John's Park. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as uh, <coughs> um, the soup kitchen and uh, the men's closet, the men's closet will be for the men's this this residence. The residence. Right. So the closet is for the residents. Yes. And um, <coughs> the soup kitchen is something that you have done on Jefferson Street that you are not currently planning to do here. Right. And I do understand, and of course that raises one of the other issues that I heard from several people, the notion of uh, how far you're likely to expand. Um, as we're talking about a conditional use permit, it is for a transitional home <coughs> for your residents, uh, not for um, a general soup kitchen for other people. Um, it would be a place for those residents. And I do appreciate particularly the need that you're talking about. Uh, I've, I'm also a recovering alcoholic, and one of the things that I have done over the years is to take AA meetings into the Brown County Jail. And in those meetings, I hear a lot of people talking about their fears about getting out, about finishing up their time and then going back to exactly where they were before. And how can they possibly start a new life when they're surrounded <coughs> by the people that they got in trouble with before? So uh, th that that transformation is a very powerful one, and, uh, and I want to to thank you for uh, seeing what you can do about that. But we are looking at a home that would be for the 46 people. Yes, um, and that is firmly a part of this application. Um, Mr. Fry, I hope you don't think that we have anything cooked already. <laughs> yeah. uh, we would not be sitting here tonight if we did. And th these particular kinds of facilities are both a great need in the community and also because <coughs> we have not experienced so much homelessness as in the last 15 years or so. Something that we don't <coughs> are familiar with and whatever we aren't familiar with is, is pretty frightening. What impressed me in your application was uh, the operation plan that you put together. It's very tight. The curfew at 10, 30, 11, uh, the random <coughs> urine tests, as well as breathalyzer tests. Uh, it sounds like you're running a very, very tight ship. Very tight. And I'm wondering, have you shared that operation plan? I mean, I know it's, it's a lot of pages, folks. It's what, 40? Something like that? Um, have you shared that with the neighbors so that they have a sense of what you're doing to make sure that the house is well run and that the men who say that they care about change, in fact, are showing that in what they're doing? Um, we haven't, um, but we can, we, we will make it available. That would know. be lovely. I think uh, that would reassure many on our, people. On our, mm -hmm. Post it on our website. And I know you also mentioned in that operation plan that there would be a full-time on-site resident both during the daytime and, and another night. one at night yes. uh, as uh, managers. You've re mentioned case managers as well. Yes. How many case managers would be involved with your 46 individual residents? I'd say about five or six. Okay. You know. Um, on-site or off-site? On-site. Uh, Everything is on-site. M Mrs. Fry, we need to ask you, yeah, uh, he needs to direct his comments to us and we need to ask a, a question. Okay. So on-site or off-site, they would be case managers assigned to particular individuals in addition to the two fully on-site, is it resident uh, site managers? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and then I wondered about the other parcels that you own. And could you point out to us on the map where those are? So that beautiful yeah. building that you're looking at now, the former nursing these, home. These three houses. Okay. Yeah. Those three that are on Chicago Street. Right. And what, um, are you seeing those as connected to transformation <coughs> or uh, projects for the men to be working on uh, to put houses up for sale? 
Uh, well, we, well, Again, we, trying to well, understand what it is you're planning to do. Okay. So what we are we are trying to do there is uh, what we are doing there is is lease that out to low income mm -hmm. families. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have the first one is um, um, we are working on it right now. Is is um, leased out to. Um, uh, a, a man and woman who they have a child on the way and they have two already, mm -hmm. um, which will be they are talking about going to the school across the street. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, I spoke to both of the pastors, and they they on board with us also. You mentioned uh, in again in the operation plan that you had several churches involved. Are there others beside those two that are that you would be working with? Well, there's there's um, 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 several churches that's that's want to work with. Uh, <coughs> uh, stopped at this moment um, um, because of no location. I have uh, uh, coming from the Fort 36 to over here. A couple of grants I don't sit back in. I I I, I stopped because of the location, but I'm looking at um, several churches um, uh, working with us. Okay, and you already have established relationships with parole officers and with the yes. law enforcement agencies in yes. town, as I understand yes. it. And then just one other question. A couple times, uh, and the woman who spoke from your congregation <coughs> as well mentioned uh, the sort of image that it sounded like people had of who these residents would be. Um, they, some of them are coming from prison, but they have served their time, correct? Yes. So this, we're not talking about an expansion of a prison. This no. is a transitional facility right. moving back right. into... It's not like yeah. uh, Hubert, uh, yeah. nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. okay. That, that's very helpful. And the. The felons are people who have committed felonies and have again paid the price of those felonies. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you being patient with my my pickiness, but I wanted to make sure that we do have a clear understanding. That's good. Thank you. And and, and there was another question that was um, um, spoke of earlier. Uh, a statement. Uh, we have uh, my best friend is security cameras. Oh, yeah. So and right now, that's what we're we're putting up. We have cameras going everywhere, in the halls to the, the, the and, and so we have something like uh, probably twenty something cameras going through, and then the, the outside of the the perimeter, um, there will be cameras um, that will be um, recorded twenty four hours. Thank you. Yeah. Any other? Yes, Commissioner. Uh, so I think that you've done a really good job laying out your internal cre credibility, your self-policing, but tell me what you see your role is in engaging with community policing, so law enforcement, probation and parole, <coughs> uh, things of that nature. When is the situation that you see when you need to contact law enforcement, I think that that's something that members of the community deserve to be reassured on. Well, we work closely with the law enforcement and um, and they're, they, they come through there and uh, ask about whoever. We take them, I, I tell them, don't be, don't have no warrant, don't be in no trouble because we bring them straight to the road, you know. Um, and um, um, probation and parole officers, um, if a person, say a person came up positive on a test, we immediately report that to the, the probation, probation and parole officers. Um, the, the probation and parole officers, they talk to us about the type of person they, they are. They, he's a good person, but he kind of, you know, you know, he need help and this and that. And so they give us um, a little guideline how to work with that individual. And when they when they come in and they're on probation and parole officer, I like to ask the parole officer, um, um, what type of person is he? 
you know, what do I need to look for? Is there any type of stipulation or so anything like that? And so when I get that information, I also share it with them so there won't be no hidden anything. That if you get outside of your boundaries, you know, we will um, report this to your probation or parole officer. And they like that, you know. So they, we're there, they said that we're their eyes away from them. So what about uh, a situation where you're, if you had a resident who was not on probation or parole mm -hmm. and you had suspicion that they had drugs in their room, uh, would you contact law enforcement to investigate or would you just uh, evict them? Uh, if they have drugs, that's police coming in. And so the, the one thing we got to be careful in our type of facility is allowing people to get away with something. Mm -hmm. You know, if you let one get away with it, the other sit back and say, well, he let him get away with it, so we're going to do the same. So we, we want them to know that if you cross that boundary and we catch you, there's consequences. And so now that it, it put fear in the next person's um, um, spirit about doing the same thing. So maybe this would be a better question for your statistics guide, but um, what percent of past residents in all of your prior uh, incarnations have you had to have arrested and removed from the property? Probably in the, from 2012 to, to 2018, I believe we had probably five. Five out of 680 approximately? Yes. Thank you. Yes. For their discussion. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Yes, sir. My name is Minister Canario Johnson. I'm uh, one of the case managers and the assistant director of Transformation House. Um, I'm that uh, statistics guy that Pastor referred to. So, um, a lot of what I've been hearing tonight is um, concerns about the type of residence for Transformation House and a lot of, you know, um, convicted felons and um, things of that nature. Transformation House, um, so it's about, it's less than 30%. It's right around 27% of guys that actually probation and parole um, that come to the Transformation House. The rest are um, everyday men that have went through a hard time. So I've heard <coughs> some of guys talk about, you know, your homes and the loss of value and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, there's so many men that we deal with the whoever who has lost their home and now they're trying to find a, a new way you know so then they turn to the streets and, and there's so much you know but there's a very it's a very small percentage of of these convicted felons people on parole you know all of these that that we um, are talking about tonight mm -hmm. you know the so when we were at 436 uh, Jefferson we kind of knew we were in the right neighborhood because, you know, we'd go behind the facility at times and it would be a line of alcohol bottles from all the people that were going to St. John's. <coughs> so um, we were able to get a fence up and then to start bringing some of the ones that were ready for the program into our program to, to help change that behavior and that mindset. You know, and after a while you start to see, you know, the neighborhood changing. You know, and it's the same thing as we came over to Clay Street. You know, even now since the time that we've been coming around and, and um, just looking at the property, taking care of things, you know, we see a lot of, of some of those same elements. And it's like, to me, a lot of the element is already there. Like you said, you know, it was there some years back. I've been in Green Bay for 22 years. I love the city. Um, like at Regency East, uh, there's a parking lot that runs right beside the property. So we've seen uh, 
different types of meetings, hand-to-hand -hand type of uh, drug deals and whatnot. And then there's a lot of people that kind of goes behind the um, Clay Street property that we're looking at here now. And they kind of use that as a pathway to get back into um, their building. And and it's a, it's some it's some traffic around there. So when I hear about you know kids walking from school from the parks and stuff like that, like to me, I believe that because of that type of element that's already in the neighborhood, like I would think that those type of things will be watched, you know, um, because of what's already going on. But what we want to do is be able to to bring to the program, and, and that was something that I had addressed the night that we did the open house. That if we can, if we're able to take. Um, let's just say on the low range of 25% of the people that have been any kind of issue in the neighborhood and go through our program to now that they're working full-time jobs, taxpayers, you know, now you have a much better element and money funneled back into the neighborhood, back into as taxpayers, you know. As of right now, you're looking at who's taking from it. I know. I mean, I hope I'm making myself clear, but you know, so it's it's a it's an all around thing that that comes about um, just through the program itself. So just a couple things on statistics, real quick. Um, I already said about the um, probation and parole, and I also want to just um, address that issue of recidivism. And I talked, and I heard someone talk about that. Um, as far as being um, going back to jail and, 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 and stuff like that. So recidivism is when someone makes a new crime after they've already um, was convicted of one. They make a new one and they go back to prison. Okay, so for Brown County, recidivism rate was about 38.4% the last time they actually <coughs> did a statistic. Um, I believe that was 2014. For Transformation House, the recidivism rate is less than 5%. <coughs> So the guys that come through our program, less than 5% actually commit a new crime and go back to prison. Same thing for the reincarceration. Uh, re less than 5% that actually go back out and recommit one of the same crimes that they were incarcerated for before. So what I'm saying is that um, the program works. The program works. And, and what we're looking at is not only the neighborhood. Now I understand that, that you know, Everybody's like, hey, this is a great program, but not in my backyard. Well, like I said before, I love the city. Not just this neighborhood or that neighborhood, but I love the city. My daughter was growing up in this city. She was born in this city. Like, I, I understand it because this is, a, this is a, a, a great place to raise kids at. You know, it's a great place to be for the economy, period. So I, I like the city, and for me, the program is going to have a, a major effect on the city as it has been over the last six years. So that's that's all I have to say. Does anybody have anything for me? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. No. Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm very impressed by your, your referring agencies. That was one of the questions that's been in my mind. That was like who you work with on the <coughs> outside, and these are all very professional, uh, especially like the Brown County Veterans Service Department. Fantastic. Yes, sir. Uh, Pathways for Better Life, great uh, bell on health. Uh, and I, I guess that brought another question to my mind. If, if some of your uh, people who live there, basically, need uh, medical help or drugs dispensed, is that handled like by your own health then? Or, because I don't imagine you do that, you don't have drugs on, on site or anything like that. Well, what we do as far as um, prescription medication, like Pastor uh, mentioned before, we don't allow anyone to have prescription bottles in their rooms. Okay. They have to have a seven-day planner and all the prescription medications are locked away. Okay, they got a bubble wrapped or something like that? Or? Right, okay. like the, um, like the, just the seven, they only have seven days at a time. Okay. So then when we do random drug testing, the drug test will show anything over the norm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. She has a question. You've already spoken that. The lady had a question. Oh, did you guys want to? No. No, they got the address. Just a question. Go ahead. By way of explanation, once you've spoken, 
Um, that's it. You, you get one chance to speak, and that's it. I'm sorry, I didn't actually to look for a code of conduct for the meeting, and I couldn't find one. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Why don't you open one, that's it. Yes, ma'am. Can I speak? Yes. Uh, my name is Julie Sigmund. I'm a resident at 445 South Webster mm -hmm. Avenue. I live right here. I've lived there for just over 14 years. I live there with my husband and my daughter. Um, we've had, I guess this is really new to me because Paul's letter was the first time I've heard of this. So I'm just trying to take all this in, trying to understand what you're about, which I think is awesome. I think that's fantastic. It is needed. Um, I know we've had some issues in our home. Um, even with, um, <laughs> it, it, recently, within the last year, we've had a homeless man sitting in our, or laying in our vestibule. And this is from, who knows, if he's from St. John's or wherever he was from. I have no idea. I did have to call the police on that um, to get him removed because I didn't know, you know, I wasn't going to try and do it myself. Um, we've had, I we've ended up putting up security cameras around our home um, because we've had somebody try and break in. Obviously, we're in an exposed area. Um, so that was kind of a surprise. So we have some security issues at our home alone, um, which even raises, yes, you have an 80%, you know, which I think is fantastic, but what about that 20%? Where are they gonna end? Are they gonna end up in my vestibule one night? I don't know. So um, security is a huge, huge concern for our family and for our neighbors as well. Um, I don't know that we have a voice. I hope we do. Um, I feel that I understand why this facility is something that they look at. I just don't know why um, it's not somewhere like Whitney School, the old Whitney School, where it is more, um, the ability for transportation is, is more readily available or job service is more readily av available or Brown County Library is another resource. Like housing, th what's needed to where they have the walking distance because not everybody's gonna have a vehicle when they're trying to get back on their feet and I totally get it. So I guess there's several concerns which were, there's some that were addressed tonight, but um, you know, in all honesty, it makes me really nervous and it makes me think that I'm not going to be a long-term resident. Our family will have to look at security all around. So, um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Motion to close the floor. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Bremer and a second by Holder Corpus Tax to close the floor. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we are back to a regular order of business. Is there any further discussion among mm -hmm. the commissioners? Yes, Commissioner Hampton. I have some questions for staff. So, I know this has already been said, but I just want to verify. If, the, if we exceed 46 people, that cancels this evening, correct? Boy, uh, anything beyond that is not permitted. So if there's a building permit issue, it's been based on the maximum of 46. Mm -hmm. There should not be any other residents more than that in that structure without both zoning approval and building permit approval. So that means it would have to come back before the planning commission and council for okay. So then as far as, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but how we classify nuisance properties, it's complaint driven, correct? Sure. So what happens, is there a threshold of calls before something gets done or? Um, I guess I would go back to the conditions. Um, <coughs> item C, I think there's some discretion on the council, the planning commission and the development director, Kevin, where he can, or they can all weigh in or take concerns from neighbors and, and react to that and present <coughs> that to the planning commission, I guess. 
Is mm -hmm. there a time limit on the CUP, or it's basically until uh, the pastor no longer runs it? CUP has to be established within one year of the approval. And it is good, I suppose, for the life of the transformation house. If the building goes vacant for more than a year, then the it's CUP finished. goes away. Right. Um, and then the last question I have, as far as um, Commissioner Bremer was talking about soup kitchen, the pantry, do those uses fall within the CUP? Uh, I would tend to think they do um, hmm. as, a, as a shelter facility in general. But that could be specified here as part of the condition of approval if you wanted to take those out. But I think they're part and parcel of the shelter operation. Right. Okay, those well, are the questions that I had. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, pretty well assuming uh, that uh, this is much the same uh, policing for lack of any other words, as we have it like in St. John's or whatever, whatever conditions or anything, pretty similar? I think the conditions are similar. I mm -hmm. think theirs might be more elaborate and detailed. Okay. Um, but I think in general they're very, very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, most of us have been on this planning commission for 10, 15 years or whatever. And uh, I think that uh, that was always handled very well with them. And we did go through a lot of p different paces with uh, that particular place. And, so I would hope that we're, we're looking at the same thing, other than, uh, you know, reading all the fine print in here and everything. And, uh, and I know that has worked. We have, we have made it work and, and worked right. with these people. And that's been an ongoing thing. Like they have a limited term mm -hmm. CUP, so to speak, so it has to be renewed on a three-year basis, too. Yeah. They've done that, I think, last year for their third three-year period. Yeah. This yeah. one is granted with no time limit, per se, except under the current zoning requirements. Mm -hmm. So. But they're a temporary emergency facility. They're, they're a different type of mm -hmm. facility, so we would hope that need would go away. It hasn't gone away, but that's why there's additional review. This would not come back before the Planning Commission unless there was a change or expansion to the okay. facility. Yeah, we have been through uh, uh, our share of uh, different episodes, basically with St. John's. And sure. Worked our way through them, and I would think that if we could offer the same thing with this, too. Right. More or less to put all these people's minds to rest here. And uh, the one gentleman that's staring at me right now, I think he came up with some really interesting things. And, and believe it or not, I think that, that these things are pretty well covered with uh, our enforcement of the conditional use. <coughs> there are definitely some strings that are associated with right. this that can be utilized. Okay, thank you. I'm Bob. Um, Appreciating your response to Commissioner Hansen's question and the correction to my misunderstanding. It could be then a condition that we might add to this that the activities at um, Transformation House would be limited to those that serve the residents only. You can, but Transformation House does provide community events as well as it was mentioned previously, so I don't know if you want to. But that's an ability for them to reach out to the neighbors as well. So mm -hmm. I guess you have to be cautious about how you want to mm -hmm. condition that. Yeah. Um, it's a homeless shelter first. It's a, that's their primary use. Right. It's not a soup kitchen. That's more of an accessory use. They don't do that, I don't think, all the time. <coughs> maybe not anticipated all the time. So that's why I think it's, a, it's an acceptable as part of the homeless shelter. Okay. Hmm. What to think about that then? And I'm wondering, um, <coughs> The, the primary use is as a home for these residents. And I think you know, that's also something we need to keep in mind when we're talking about residents who are living there, not people who are passing through. And might just be there <coughs> for one or two nights. With some exceptions, I would assume, those who do not meet the, the requirements that they have signed on to when they came in, uh, who would be expelled. Right. Pastor Rico can speak to that, but I don't think there's socializing going on. The whole idea of the program is it's it's kind of pretty much locked down. Yeah. You know, people come in and going visiting because that's not the audience they want to cater to. Yeah. But there are, again, those community events like uh, the barbecues and the other things that they do to, to reach out and mm -hmm. help others. Which would be an important part of the, the whole. I understand what right. you're saying. Right. Mm -hmm. They want to have booyah. I don't know if that'd be the worst thing in the world if they did that in August. But depends on how good the booyah is. Right. <laughs> so. 
Chair, if I could maybe just say um, something. So we talked about this, and I just some of my comments I think are directed to the Planning Commission. I mean, they're also directed to a number of the residents that are here tonight. Um, I think just you know goes without the record. Like these are tough decisions for us, and so in terms of um, you know the process that's involved, uh, you know we take this very seriously, and I think we've taken our time with this process. Um, you know, and I appreciate you know Pastor Rico's patience in, in terms of going through this process. I think there's some things that we've asked the applicant to do in order to provide us you know the best information possible. Um, you know, when it comes to land use, I mean, there's certain things obviously in the city, right, that you can do by right. Permitted uses, you can go in and just do them without question. But there's also a handful of uses that just because of their special circumstances, I mean, require really extra care, extra scrutiny in, in terms of. <coughs> How we apply them, um, you know. That's why we have this conditional use process, and that's why we have you know staff to look through and, and make a recommendation. But ultimately, plan commission to make that recommendation to the council, who ultimately is the one who grants these things. Um, and you know, when we talk about these conditional uses, um, look, I mean, when we have the zoning uh, classification we have right now, this this office residential, um, a shelter is a conditional use, and so what we've looked at is. Um, you know, at the end of the day, what are the conditions that we're going to put on this facility, um, you know, really to protect the health, safety, welfare of the community? Um, you know, and I just, you know, pulling up the zoning code, I mean, things that we can put conditions on, um, you know, the location, construction, maintenance, operations, I mean, all those types of things that really we deem necessary to do so. Um, you know, I think it goes for the city too. I mean, we put investment into that neighborhood in terms of different projects we have, and we want to see the same things. And so when we do these conditions, um, you know, it, it's tough to do them ahead of the fact because, you know, we can't put conditions on perception and conjecture and then what may happen. Um, we can only look at, you know, maybe what's happened in the past and in terms of, again, asking applicants to bring evidence of, of things they've done in other places. Um, but then, in the same way, um, you know, what's ultimately going to protect those residents in the neighborhood, and if those conditions aren't met, I think that there's a quick path for us to reconsider, um, you know, this project. And I think one of the conditions that we have in here, you know, providing that discretion for either myself, one of you, or a member of the council, that, you know, we do get police calls or we do get concerns. Um, you know, that are raised by the residents of things going on, that this will be right back here at, at this table to make a recommendation to, to council. Um, so I, I think in terms of, again, where, um, you know, we move forward with these, again, I appreciate everyone coming out here this evening. I know this will be going to our next council, which will be next Monday, uh, the 18th, for, for our final decision. Um, you know, I think it's been good that you've been working, uh, you know, with your older person on this issue, and you know, I would encourage um, Pastor Rico and the applicant to continue working. Uh, just in terms of the operation plan, um, I know Pastor Rico said he's going to put that on his website. It's actually in the packet for tonight's material, so if you want to go through and, and read it, it's already on uh, the city website. If you look at the plan commission agenda and, and go through, um, and again, if there's any other things that you have in terms of questions, I mean, that's why our, our staff is here for that. So I just. I need to speak up sometimes because I know people take time out of their schedules in the evenings. I just don't want them to think it's it's for naught that uh, again the calls and things that have come in before this. Um, it's a tough process, and, and we do the best that we can, and ultimately give it to you and, and council to make that decision. So, uh, thank you for indulging me for that. And if I could, I think. You said that the Common Council meet on Monday, is that correct? That is correct. We have an election okay. next Tuesday, so the council meeting is so actually Monday. So don't come Tuesday, Tuesday because nobody will be no way to be. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Popowski. Uh First off, I, I want to just point out that um, I live on Van Buren Street, and uh, the firm that I own with my partners is on the corner of Crooks and mm -hmm. South Jefferson at 414 South Jefferson, right next door to uh, the other property, 436 yes. South Jefferson. Um, we have never ever, in the time I've been there, uh, had any problems with uh, our neighbors uh, at 436 at all. Wouldn't, wouldn't have even known that they were there but for the occasional small barbecue. 
Uh, and that's the honest to God truth. We have 30 employees in there, not a single complaint from any of my employees about not feeling safe. Um, and my house that I live in with my wife is, um, like I said, on Van Buren Street. Um, I had three notes uh, of my concerns uh, as we were going through this, and I think two of the three we've covered pretty amply. One is the security plan. Um, 27 cameras is pretty reassuring <coughs> to me. Um, cameras are such a good natural deterrent, especially if they're visible, which I trust that they are going to be in your facility. Um, I hope that some of those cameras are also, also on the outside of the property, parking lots, um, sidewalks, etc. So it would actually probably provide greater security to the, to the neighborhood than if the facility wasn't there at all because there'll be additional monitoring that the police can go to say, hey, we had this break-in at this house. We had um, this report of this type of person in the neighborhood. Can we look at your security footage to see if you guys have anyone matching that description? I think it would probably add some security to the neighborhood on that area. Um, and then the third issue uh, was engagement with uh, the authorities versus self-policing. And I thought that the past was very unequivocal that if there is a law violation, the police are coming in. And that's really what we want to see in that area. So in my neighborhood, I think that uh, I intend to support this uh, for, for these reasons. The one caveat I had um, was the idea of kind of an ongoing soup kitchen for the public. Not because there's not a need for that. Uh, I think it's a good need, but I think it's a need that's served in other ways. Mm -hmm. I do like the idea of having occasional public events, and it's really hard for me to get my head around how we craft a provision that would say um, occasional public outreach events are acceptable, but an ongoing operational soup kitchen is something that I'm concerned about for the neighborhood. So maybe I'd defer to my other commissioners to perhaps come up with the crafting of an appropriate condition if there, if there is one. Uh, but ultimately, it seems that most of these um, uh, potential residents are, um, frankly, just regular people who need a break. So I intend to support them. Thank you. Is that a motion? So I would move to approve the proposal um, and add a provision that would read as follows, and I'm certainly asking for advice on this wording, that the facility is not to operate an ongoing soup kitchen uh, with public access. Sounds good to me. I would second that motion. That's it. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Petrovsky <coughs> and a second by Commissioner Vespisky. And just for clarification, that motion also includes all the recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Presented yep. well, yeah. as presented yes. by the staff. With one additional condition, condition yeah, yes. saying that there's not to be an ongoing public soup kitchen, more or less. And I think, right, we can look at a legal way to put that in. So that's so the be activities to yeah. serve the residents with occasional outreach, um, right. occasional outreach activities, <coughs> not including a public soup ki kitchen. I like that, yeah. yeah. Like Might even be occasional neighborhood outreach. Mm -hmm. Community outreach, okay. you know, mm -hmm. the community gets used to I would hold my motion for that addition. You go with that, Jerry? Yes. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, okay. I'm okay. 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 So we have a motion and a second on the recommendation to approve the recommendation. Is there any further discussion among commissioners? Hearing none, I would ask that you cast your vote. Thank you. So just 
clarification, this will go to City Council next Monday at 6 p.m. 6 p.m., yes. No earlier today, yes. Could I have a point of privilege just to make a comment? You may. So for those of you who live in the, the neighborhood, um, accountability is a two-way street here. So they've made promises and representations to you that this place is going to operate a certain way, it's going to have a certain quality of people and protection. If it doesn't, hold them accountable. We will be more than willing to revisit this if there's violations. Uh, the police will be more than willing to engage if there's problems. And if they fail to live up to their end, they will be held accountable too. And that would be a matter of registering complaints with the city. And would that would be to which department? Charlie? So you can contact our department. Um, there's a few ways. I mean, on our city website, there's a way to fill out a complaint there. Um, or if you would like to call myself, Mr. Neumeyer, anyone in our planning department will be able to take those calls as well if you want to talk to somebody directly. And having said that, I would also ask that you try to give them a chance. You know, let them see what they can do. It's a good cause. Thank you. Thank you all. I would also like to mention the words that are still ongoing, so if you could. If you want to stay, you're welcome to stay for the yeah. meeting. If you do not wish to handle the other eight items that are coming down, um, I just ask that you go all the way down to the end of the hall because we have to get the door open for this meeting. So you're welcome to stay, or if you're going to go, just yeah. head down and the hall. Also, we will be taking a five-minute break real quick, just for anyone that needs it. <laughs> so we will be in in five minutes at 9-11. You're at 8 11. Six. I don't know. It has been a little bit. All right. We will reconvene. The next item on the agenda is item two consideration with possible action on the request to authorize a conditional use permit for minor. minor Auto repair facility at 2425 West Mason Street, admitted by Brian Buck, MB Holdings Enterprises, LLC. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a request for a conditional use permit for minor auto repair at 2425 West Mason Street. The property is highlighted in red here. Uh, I 41 is just going to off the map here. This is uh, West Mason Street. Uh, Festival Foods, Walmart to the north. Uh, the Frontage Road, uh, Mason here, by uh, Hobart Drive. Uh, this building is currently vacant. It's along a commercial corridor. <coughs> um, there's some multifamily in this area just to the south and low density residential um, further southwest. Um, the city's comprehensive plan rec recommends commercial. Again, this is a commercial corridor, so that's why there's so much red. Um, the zoning is uh, general commercial. However, there's some C2 zoning that's adjacent to that, which is very compatible with the uh, conditional use request uh, before you. Uh, this is an image of the site kind of looking southwest. Here's the Farnage Road, West Mason, and the existing building um, with overhead doors, uh, some outdoor storage. You can see again, it's been vacant for some time. Um, this is a street perspective. It's the former East Towing Building. Uh, so the proposal is to move a minor auto repair business in there. Uh, there is an operating plan that is attached, a uh, basic one that's attached within your agenda uh, to repurpose that uh, building. We did notify affected property owners. We did receive any calls or questions on this, and we are recommending approval uh, subject to these conditions um, attached the uh, atta on the screen and attached in your agenda. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> any discussion? Mm -hmm. Move to open the floor. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Kowski, a second by Commissioner Wispiski to open the floor for people to speak. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Of course. Does anybody wish to speak on this? I'm, I'm Brian Buck. If you have any questions for me, I'll try to answer any of them. Um, if you want to. <coughs> Thank you. 
Um, so is there anything you'd like to elaborate on? Well, I own the auto aces across the street at 2430 West Mason. <coughs> Just directly across the street. Um, there's no room to grow there, so my plan is to move some of my work into that building. Um, specifically, alignments. Uh, my machines are, you know, super expensive. So not a lot of shops in town have them, and I have them. And I'm going to put at least one in there. Um, that way, I could take some of the work from 2438 West Mason Street and put it into that building there. Um, it's set up. I mean, they've been towing cars out of there. This is a I mean, the inside is pretty rough for looking to clean that up. Um, one of the one of the thing concerns that were brought to my attention that I would <coughs> to discuss tonight is this isn't a tire shop. There are tires like hanging outside. We don't store buildings. We don't tow. We're not having abandoned vehicles. They're registered cars for repair. Um, we're 100 bucks an hour, so you're we're not going to have unregistered cars there. If you're they're going to be in, they're going to be out. Um, we run a clean shop. Yes, sir. Brian, how, how many locations will this put you up to in the general area? This will be six. six. Yeah, 42 employees. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this? Move to close the floor. Second. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Drummer and a second by. Commissioner Hansen, to close the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 We are back. Move to approve the request. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Hansen and a second by Commissioner Wispisky to approve the request. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I would ask that you catch the vote. Consideration with possible action on a request to authorize a conditional use permit for an adult daycare facility at 338 Hutton Street, submitted by Adam Kirsten, Kirsten Realty. Hey, Mr. Chair, this is uh, another conditional use uh, request, conditional use permit. This one's at 338 Hutton Street, and that's highlighted in red here. Uh, East Mason is just off the street here, uh, East River running along uh, north and south here. Um, mainly a low density. <coughs> residential area here and some open schools to the north. Um, the comprehensive plan actually recommends a parkway here, but again, uh, conditional use permits are not required to comply with those under state statute. Um, the current zoning is low density residential R1 as well as other properties uh, to the east. Uh, this is an image of the site here, uh, kind of looking southwest, again, the East River, the existing facility and the parking area. And this is a uh, street view of the property. Mm -hmm. This had been used in the past 30 years as a, a daycare <coughs> facility, um, child care facility, and now is proposed to be an adult family, uh, adult daycare facility. Uh, there is a narrative that was provided from the applicant that's uh, for the tenant that's going to be uh, occupying this site. Um, we did notify affected property owners. We didn't receive any calls or questions on this. And, uh, we are supporting the request. Um, subject to the condition uh, within your agenda. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Is there anybody that wishes to speak on this? Okay. Motion will open the floor. Second. We'll have a motion by Commissioner Hanson and second by Alder Corbin staff to open the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> <coughs> Just by way of uh, some additional information, uh, we had a tenant who currently rents from us uh, in Ashwaubenon right now. They've been there for a better part of 10 years. They asked us to find them an east side location. Uh, they wanted to expand. They're going to be uh, taking care of some kids up into, into the Kiwani County area. They want something on the east side of Green Bay. Uh, so we found that for them. Then we discovered it had R1, uh, so we had to get the non-conforming uh, use. Um, Currently, it was a daycare, like you said, since 1982. Uh, they are more into the adults and young adults. So 
uh, a lot of the kids outside and the playground equipment and stuff like that would be non-existent where they are now. We don't have any of that. They're in a professional office building. Uh, the Fulton Van Dyke building in Ashwaubenon right now have been for almost <coughs> 10 years. Um, I think uh, another one of the big advantages would be, I think currently it's uh, not on the tax roll. Uh, and uh, with our purchasing it, that would, uh, I would assume, go back on the tax rolls. So, um, don't have a lot of other information. It's pretty much ideally for what they wanted, so we have very little to do on the inside, some carpets and paint, things of that nature. Um, and we do already have a five-year lease in place, but we haven't purchased it yet. So we're just uh, waiting for uh, hopefully get approval tonight and then go ahead and uh, proceed on that. Unless you have any questions. What's your name and address? Ah, my name is Steve Kirsten. Uh, my office is at 1600 Shano Avenue, uh, building, another building that we own. We have a variety of buildings in most of the mis mis municipalities are on. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you. you um, if you had any other questions about how it's run or anything, uh, Derek did come down from Milwaukee tonight if you had a question. Mm -hmm. And oh. Courtney, oh. Courtney is uh, on the Ashwaubenon. She runs the Ashwaubenon location and will be running that location also for us. For them. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. You bet. We appreciate you making the trip <laughs> even, though, even if we can't cook up any questions. <laughs> it's very straightforward. And is there anybody else that mm -hmm. questions that can be kind of Yes, sir. <laughs> I told them I will speak because I have a four hour drive back and forth, so I'm going to waste this opportunity. <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to quickly say about Paragon. We've been around for over 30 years now throughout Wisconsin. Uh, we have five locations currently. Uh, one in Green Bay, <coughs> as Steve mentioned, on 2733 South Ridge Road. Uh, we serve people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. So our main uh, business are, is our adult day program, which we serve adults ages 18 and up. Um, it is a social model program, not a medical model. So our intent is to have fun. Um, our name is Paragon Community Services for a reason. We give back to the community quite often. It's really important that our participants understand the resources that are available to them in the community. So. Uh, the Green Bay location that we have currently um, offers up to six outings, community outings per day for the participants that we serve, uh, which is far above what's typical for an adult day program. Typically, you see two in a week. Uh, we do six per day. So, in addition to the adult program, we also offer a children's program for uh, children ages 7 to 21. Um, we call it the Paragon Activity Club. We don't plan to offer that at this location right away, um, but at some point, we will get to that point based on demand, basically. Um, but it is a fun program, it's a, it's a rest of the program. It's, a, it's an opportunity for parents to work a full day. Um, <coughs> our program runs from nine in the morning until three in the afternoon. The PAC program runs from three in the afternoon until six at night and then two, two weekends per month. So um, just to give you guys a little bit more information, um, and like I said, I, I didn't want to waste six hours and not say anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for your time. Can we change address to me, please? Derek Goodman, um, I live in Milwaukee area, so uh, I don't know if you want that address or not. Um, I don't know my work address. 6251 West Forest Home Avenue in Milwaukee. Thank you. And I did come up with a question. Oh, yes. okay. Since, since you mentioned <laughs> the six activities per day, are those activities off-site? Yes, those are community-based outings. So okay. uh, they vary quite a bit. I mean, it could be something as small as going to Walmart to learn how to shop okay. and learn, you know, basic shopping skills, math skills, and how to search for a deal. And those would include transportation? Absolutely. We provide transportation. We have a fleet of vehicles. So. Okay. Uh, there was reference in the materials yeah. you submitted to transportation at cost, but that would then be for separate individual <coughs> requests for transportation, I would assume. Right, so some of our participants require transportation. Um, if they're living at home and not in a group home, then typically we can pick them up from their location and bring them to our program. And then for any community outings that we do during the day, we provide transportation for that as well. Excellent. Thank Thanks you. for the question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just made the trip yesterday. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else questions? Let's speak. Move to close the floor. Sorry. We have a motion by Commissioner Wisotsky, a second by Commissioner Wisotsky to close the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are back. Motion approved. approved. We have a motion second. by. Commissioner <laughs> Pisky and a second by Commissioner Grimmer. Do a hand to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to <laughs> approve the recommendation. Yes. Any further yes. discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, I would ask that you cast your vote. All right. Mm -hmm.
Unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, item four. Consideration was possible action. Safely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Consideration with possible action on the request to amend zoning ordinance 12 18, planned unit development, remove, removing side yard setback requirements at the 200 block of North Van Buren Street, submitted by Garrett Bader. Garrett Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, this is going to look pretty familiar to you. There was a um, planned development that came through last summer, July, I believe, um, on these four parcels in the corner of North Van Buren and Cherry. Uh, basically to take those and allow two semi-detached two-family units. So uh, kind of like two duplex townhomes right next to each other. Part of the regulation um, included a, a required five-foot side yard setback for non-common walls. So that leaves basically 10 feet in between the two buildings. Um, after construction, construction has started. Uh, the developer has, has had some additional thoughts which would require a change to the planned unit development. And I'm just going to go super quick. Um, so the comp plan recommends medium intensity retail housing. Uh, zoning here is office residential. Um, and this is the plan that was approved as part of the PUD on the left hand side, well both sides actually. So these are the elevations, the way the buildings look. Mm -hmm. And you can see the 10 foot separation between the two buildings or the five foot setback between that lot line. Uh, as you go further north, if this expands into the future, um, you'd have the same situation on the north. Um, typically, um, here's some perspectives of the same building, but typically what you'd see like the ones right up the block on North Van Buren on the other side of the street, um, <coughs> this is that separation distance. And typically what you'll see in there is, is grass, sometimes people put bushes in, but more typically becomes a patio area. Um, <coughs> that was always the thought to do that with these townhomes as well. However, the buildings are four feet out of the ground. Um, so you have the foundation uh, that rises the first floor, the entrance. So what the developer came up with after the fact, after the PUD was approved, was to put a deck that would bridge that property line, connect the two buildings together, be raised at the same height at about four feet, mm -hmm. um, make the area much more user-friendly, kind of uh, take advantage of that that area when these lots are pretty small and don't have a lot of communal space. Um, there are a few things that staff is recommending uh, in changing plan unit development. One, that an access maintenance agreement uh, is put in place so the owners of both sides of this deck know what their responsibilities are and what their rights are to use the deck and that type of thing. Uh, and the second, since no plans were provided on what the deck area would look like, um, we added in the plan unit development that the materials uh, and design would be compatible um, with the existing building, whether that's, uh, we didn't get specific, but you know, certain trim pieces or if it's the railing or whatnot, I kind of put that at staff discretion. Um, so that they will have some challenges with building code, building over a property line. Uh, they're aware of that and they're working through them right now. Um, but with that, we are recommending approval. Um, subject to the draft PUD. Thank you. Motion to open the floor. Is there anybody wishing to speak on this item? Okay. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Lipsky, a second by Commissioner Petrovsky to open the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Uh, good evening. Uh, Jared Schmidt with Robert E. Lean Associates, 1250 Centennial Center Boulevard. Um, here on uh, behalf of the developer today, he unfortunately could not be here. Um, just wanted to uh, offer the opportunity if there's any additional questions, and I'll do my best to deal with it. If not, we'll, uh, we'll defer them to staff, and hopefully they can answer them better than I can. <laughs> Are there any questions? Only one, I'd like you to communicate to Mr. Bader that he thanked us for allowing him to appear before us again, <laughs> and we were disappointed. And you're stuck with me again. I was here, <laughs> <laughs> I was here on the original PVP, so yeah, he's doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
also point out to Garrett that I appreciate he used the picture of my house to try and sway my vote. <laughs> 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 okay, well, you yeah. called me up on the phone. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Motion closed for it. Second. second. By your motion by Commissioner Rospisky, a second by <laughs> Alder Foreman Sachs, to close the floor. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion approved. Second. <laughs> we have a motion by Commissioner Rospisky, a second by Commissioner Bremer to approve the recommendation. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, the chair would ask that you pass your vote. Unanimously approved. Thank you. And again, this will come before the City Council on next Monday, February 18th at 6 p.m. Okay, the next item, item 5. Consideration with possible action on the request to vacate a public walkway <coughs> located near 626 Pinehurst Avenue, submitted by Green Bay Area Public School District. Thank you. Um, I'm not from Green Bay, so I have no idea where the elementary schools are, but everyone always talks about things in relation to schools. So this is Martin Elementary, which <laughs> makes sense to most of you. Uh, there was a public walkway that was dedicated to the original platting. Uh, the school district is requesting this portion of it be vacated for an expansion of the Dune Tiles School here. So this portion would still be retained, and we have a condition that the walkway would still be maintained to whatever point their expansion takes over. So we did have this uh, exhibit that does show that small area. And then this from the school district themselves that has the existing path and then how this would connect into the new school with the expansion. So we are recommending approval of this with the condition that some sort of a walkway be maintained on the private section of walkway that's being vacated. Okay. Thank you. Motion open floor. Second. Oh. We have a motion oh. by oh. Commissioner. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh, so there's already a walkway. Yes. There's still going to be a walkway. Yes. It's just going to be short. It'll be shorter and private. A portion. Well, I mean, who? I mean, it's it's a path to the school, so I'm assuming people who are going to the school are using it. How are they making it private? I guess. Um, once this portion is vacated, it does not become the city's responsibility any longer. So we're requiring that some sort of connection still be made to the school, but it won't be the city's responsibility any longer. So all this is public right now. So to vacate a portion of it that takes our responsibility away, it puts a responsibility onto the school district at that point. So, oh, the, school so the school district will then be responsible. Like yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And we had a motion by Commissioner Rospisky and a second by all the corporate staff to open the floor. Mm -hmm. sure. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Is there anybody wishing to speak on this? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Valerie Engelberg. I live at 631 Calvin Court. I'm one of the neighbors that um, actually sold the school district, the half acre that's in question. Mm -hmm. So my home is right here. Thank okay. you. This sidewalk at the time, <coughs> excuse me, I have a back cold. Um, at the time, we purchased the property, we own the full acre from the Presbyterian Church. This sidewalk was Wally Lyle Lettuce, who resided at this property, who has since deceased, was a janitor at the school. We saw a need for this sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So we agreed this was to be a road somewhere, now we're talking 28 years ago. Mm -hmm. <coughs> But, so, we agreed to allow that sidewalk to go in to, part of the provision was that the school and the city would take care of it. Um, after, hence, I sold that half acre to the school mm -hmm. for green space. Mm -hmm. The first that we knew about the school's expansion was when we saw them digging pilot holes Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't know what that was. So we were not notified yet that this expansion <coughs> was going through. So once we saw that, we started asking questions. <coughs> but to clarify, this was sold as green space. It was not sold to be built <coughs> on. Um, but in the process, part of this agreement was that there'd be uh, water drainage. 
So they put in a drain here on my property. There's a drain here, which was there, but I had owned right up to this back door of the school. The sidewalk was four feet, then was our lot, and the drain was there. There is another drain, uh, looking sideways here, I believe it's right here. So now we're talking three major drains, and these are the big public drains. Our concern is with the vacation here, they're going to build, and we're going to have a gym, a 110 foot piece of property coming out of the building, 110 feet coming this way toward, so it would bring it to about here, a parking lot, and another addition on the east side, <coughs> excuse me, that would be more surface. There is no talk about what's going to happen to our drains. We had just recently, was it August or September, the fire department was underwater. We had people at on our cul-de-sac, excuse me, down here with five to seven feet of water in their basement. Mm -hmm. Now this would take out these drains. Plus you're adding um, pavement for drainage, which is 100% drainage. You're adding rooftop, a gym. I have it figured, we're looking at approximately, and this is just rough, with a quarter, say we get a quarter inch of rain, we're looking at 8,320 gallons of water, which would go in to the storm drain system, which originally lies alongside this side. Well, it couldn't handle what was being given before. Now we're taking away all this green space that was like a 60% drainage system and going to a 100% drainage system. And I know people are thinking that's a once in 10 year storm. We lived originally, before we built this, we were right here since 1978. Then we built this, so we were 28 years. This has always had a water problem. Once we put in the drains, it was eliminated to, oh, maybe a foot at times on a bad storm. People didn't have flooded basements. They didn't have five or seven feet of water. <coughs> now we're taking a scenic area that was meant to be green space, vacating this public sidewalk, turning it into a private to just the school, which everybody uses this through that neighborhood to go over to the chiropractic <coughs> office, walk their animals. I mean, it's, it's a very public area. <coughs> we feel as neighbors, and I personally feel very offended by the school district, that they have not consulted the two property owners that um, this would invade my property. No, I don't, I don't have the fancy but I do have a picture out of my bedroom window. My home, which is valued on the tax roll at 295, almost 300,000, will go down in value. And that's not the, ta I'd like you to look at this, because this is where the drains are. And this is, I, what it's showing on the map that was given to us that they want to take out, they would be taking out and taking part of my land. Now, I don't know if that plat was correct that was um, put in the mail to us. I did call my alderman, but he deferred to Ms. Dax because he was going to be out of town. But what it's showing that they want to come onto my property, right where that drain is, I would lose my Christmas trees here. This neighbor, who is here, they would, they just built a fence and <clears throat> put in a pool. It looks on this map, they're going to want to come into here and vacate. Um, we think before anything's vacated, concerning this drainage system and this sidewalk, 
I think there needs to be more study done, point blank. Because the city is not, has no intention, because they were approached by the neighbors <coughs> over here, because they have, on a normal rainstorm, they have water. Now we're going to tax this system even more. And I'm thinking, yep, I'm not sure what size a gym is, but from, we're looking at probably, huh, what do I have here? Um, about 52,000 square feet of rough that's going to be running direct into a storm drain that can't, that's additional. And now that's, that didn't take in, that would be the gym, the two additions, that did not take in whether they're planning on putting, we were told they were putting a parking lot six feet from my property line, which would be additional water runoff. I'm not sure where um, all the water's gonna go. And on average from June until October, Green Bay has anywhere from two and a half to three and a half inches of rain on a normal season mm -hmm. per month. Mm -hmm. What we're not in a flood zone. This this drainage system and this storm drain system is not applicable mm -hmm. to the what's proposed. Before taking this out, I would mm -hmm. like to see what's going in there before it's approved, because once this is approved, there is no, I mean, it's the building block. Also, on the letter that we received, it said that it was, um, forgive me, please, um, to Pinehurst. There is, this walkway is to Kelvin. There is a property here that's going to be the gentleman bought it. He was to build in November. I do believe due to the water situation, it's up for sale again. <coughs> so there would be another person with a home here going into this storm drain. There's no parking here. There's no, I just see a lot of building. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't look forward to having out of three sides of my house a brick wall in a parking lot when the intent was to have green space and um, as far as the city and the school taking care of that that was negotiated back 28 years ago mm -hmm. we've had people drive down this so if they're going to put another parking lot in here we're going to have more vandalism we're going to have more kids driving and believe me, they drive down the sidewalk between the two orange pylons. If they can't <coughs> get through the pylons, they come up <coughs> on our lawn between the tree and the house. Well, the tree was lost in the storm. So I don't know what we're going to see now out our front window. So I, I just would like the uh, Planning Commission to, at this time, put a stay on that until the water issues are taken care of and more research is done. And we received this letter on, uh, what was it, Monday? Last Monday, and it was written on the 30th. There was no notification um, for us to find out anymore. This is the, the first view I saw of what the school is intended to be was when she just put it up now. Mm -hmm. And that is, to me, that's not being forthcoming to the neighborhood. We do need good schools, but we need green space for these kids too, <coughs> not just tar and blacktop. There's parking issues, there's, when the school was designed back in 1970, whatever it was when it was built, it was an open concept school. All the additions were, the school was designed to come out this way. Where this blacktop is, <coughs> this is playground. This was designed to come out with rooms such as this. I have no idea why they're taking away the park light setting, the playground, the green grass here. To these, these homes are not cheap homes. These are not your hundred thousand dollar homes. 
and they're taking away that park setting. Mm -hmm. By vacating this, we're condoning it. And uh, if they want to take this out, then I say, as a property owner, and I'm sure Ted can attest to it, we would like this full sidewalk on. Mm -hmm. Thank I'm you. I'm sorry, can you repeat what you just said? Well, <coughs> they're taking this sidewalk out. Right. And coming out 110 feet here. Right. Which is going to bring them right to here. Right. This is our property line now. We do need clarification what they intend mm -hmm. to take out. My, I've got a pine tree here. There's mm -hmm. a storm drain. Yeah. Uh, my phone lines are right there. Um, Ted has a fenced-in yard with a pool and a huge <coughs> pine tree in this corner. What that projected red line showed on the map that was sent us, that they would be taking that out and trying to vacate that also. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if that's just a misrepresentation on the map or if this is for sidewalk only, but if this is a not a public sidewalk any longer, then why do we need a public sidewalk here? We'd like it vacated completely. Because then we could retain at least some sense, <coughs> excuse me, some sense of neighborhood in here instead of... Um, you know, going into, I hate to say it, a ghetto school. Thank you. I understand your, your point now, and I literally didn't hear it before. I do have one other question. You talked about the negotiation uh, along of that sidewalk. Is there any written record of that at all? Or when you sold the property, was <coughs> it sold specifying for green space? It was sold as green space. Um, what had happened, the road here mm -hmm. was vacated. Mm -hmm. And that property was given legally to this property owner and this property owner. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. then when the sidewalk issue came in, it was agreed on. Was it written? I, I don't believe that it's in writing. I'm not sure because matter of fact, how we decided where the property line would be because this was not it wasn't, um, we had to get permission to put a driveway here on the 60 feet or what, 80 feet, whatever this is. But it was an agreement made. So the fence line of the school, that's, it was verbally done with the school board that we would okay just to go straight with that fence line so the school didn't have a jot in or us a jot in. So that's how this came out as a square. Now I'd have to go back and dig in my records, but I do not believe we had a written contract, if that's what you're looking for. On the, on the sidewalk. Yeah. On, the on the sidewalk, the green on the green space. Oh, on the green green space. space. That was what I was wondering about. Um, but, mm -hmm. thank you. you know, this home, these homes are not small homes. You're looking at I, I, 2,000 I to 3,000. Thank you. She has a large um, hedge here, mm -hmm. which the school put this little parking lot in, and we didn't say anything. Because, <coughs> but now it's, I'm not sure, but if you could pull up the school again for us, please. Um, this, I would like to yep. see the distance here. I'd like to know where the property line is here what I'd like to know. Would you want to, would you purchase a $300,000, $350,000 home with this in your backyard? That would be Marlene Haar up on the hill. Um, this is coming down. Marlene's home is right here. <coughs> this comes down from Sunrise. Mm -hmm. My understanding is this may be six feet from the property line. Mm -hmm. This parking lot and this walkway. May I take a picture of that? Sure. May I take a picture of that? Just so I can look at it before she switches the slide again? Sure. It's, it's on the website. If you wanted to look at our agenda, it's, it's okay. listed on. It's on the, okay. which was posted today. Yes. Um, so there again, there are several other neighbors that are concerned mm -hmm. regarding the water issue. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is not... You know, maybe you can answer where the school ends right now. 
where the gray on that building is. The gray so the white right is the expansion right area. The so gray this is, the is all new right. yes. rough space. This is all new rough space. That's the gym. Yeah. Am I correct? I have no idea. That's the gym. I believe that's the gym. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a whole new parking lot. Mm -hmm. How many feet this is. And you notice they moved the playground. Okay, so now the soccer field, I'm not even sure that <coughs> the soccer field is going to be intact. Um, this, you know, this green <coughs> space here, unless they're going to redo this whole thing, I mean, that's only like two, three feet, and there's basketball hoops there. I mean, it looks very nice. I have a question. Can we go back to the property map? This uh, one or the other? No, not the uh, this one, yeah. So the the section of the pathway that is between your property and I believe the property directly to My the south, property. Mm -hmm. um, is that owned, does it fall equally on each property holder, or is it on one or the other? It, it's divided equally. equally. On both. Okay. Because when this was vacated, the road, yeah. the property was given mm -hmm. to each. Now, when I bought this 28 years ago, it went right to the corner of the school. The school did not even own where they had sidewalk for kids to line up. <coughs> that was actually my property. Mm -hmm. um, so now you're bringing the, this playground is coming over in here, down this way, and they're putting a building right up to here. That, and they're, it's not going to be a public sidewalk anymore. Thanks, I think I, I So yeah. if there's no public sidewalk here, why do we need a public sidewalk there? Mm -hmm. Not only that, but the water is a big, big mm -hmm. concern. That's the biggest issue, the water. Mm -hmm. the what are you going to do if so the water doesn't go our way? Yes, They're well, taking off three drains. Way, way, way off topic. Way here. off. Um, yeah. We are not prepared to answer any of these type of questions. No. And right. It's, I, but I, I think we need to be prepared to answer some of these questions. I think we need to get this directed because well, this is not what we're talking about at okay. all. Right. <laughs> You're talking about vacating yeah. that side yeah. Yeah. But we're just right. not prepared to answer your questions as you are. Right. We don't have that question. Right. But to vacate this sidewalk, mm -hmm. you're opening that door. Yeah. And by vacating this sidewalk, you are taking out these three. There's another storm drain here, but the sidewalk alone is three drains, gotcha. three water drains, which is a big problem. The water flows down this sidewalk, even with those three drains. It comes down that sidewalk and goes to a drain here, and it comes down this way. And it can be an inch deep coming, running full force down that sidewalk, the way it sits right now. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie, could you shed any light on it? Sure can. Yeah. So the map that she was referring to does have a big red box, which I think maybe you guys saw as well, that basically just shows it's this part of the vacation has nothing which to part? do. Which part? I'm sorry. This, the same that we've been talking about. The box just was to designate that it's that portion, not the entire <coughs> portion. So if that's confusing, my apologies. This only has any implications on the sidewalk, which is already a public sidewalk. It has nothing to do with anyone's private, like whether it's them or the school district, it's only the public sidewalk that we're discussing here. During site plan review for the expansion, they will have to adhere to a drainage plan. So I'm sure that that's already been submitted for. If it hasn't, they have to submit for that. With that, drainage goes to our Department of Public Works. They look at it. So if we are vacating this and removing this, the school district would be responsible for compensating the amount of drainage that they're taking away. So if there are three drainage holes that are being impacted by the removal of a public sidewalk, they have to then make up for that in some other form. How that happens, I have no idea. We don't typically get involved in that because it's, I don't know how to do storm water calculations, um, but drainage plans are required as part of the site plans that are reviewed through our department and DPW. If I may interject, I've got an idea. When you do go back to them, tell them to consider when they put this parking lot in here and make that a pervious parking lot if they're having water problems. We can make those recommendations, yeah. but not part but of this yeah. vacation. Yeah, no. Just as staff. Like he said, we're, we're way off of our right. bounds of what yes. we're supposed to be saying. Basically, if you guys think that the expansion yeah. is not good for the community, you can deny a vacation, then they cannot do that expansion in this area. Mm -hmm. um, if you trust our site plan process, they will take care of the drainage issues. 
but, but I cannot confirm that that will be done. Yeah, they have to. That, uh, it's done during We're not to that point. <laughs> so let me ask a question just as it relates to the sidewalk. Is there a particular reason why we're preserving the, the walkway access um, across the two properties? Yeah. It's, this is this is public property. This right. is not private property. Well, I get that, but but the public walkway is maintained for the same reason it is right now to get people to the school and through the community. So mm -hmm. initially, when this was all platted out, this was platted as a road, so there would be connectivity. That was eventually abandoned, and then you see this across the city where they put in a walkway anyway, so people can get from one side of any road to the other. She had said herself, people use this to get advance. over here. Mm -hmm. That would still continue just because this becomes private and this building gets expanded doesn't negate the need to get people to this spot. So it would be private in the sense that it's maintained by the school but still has a public access. Yes. Oh. Can I ask Until one question? Yeah, right. except that they owe it. They don't. No. Mm -hmm. That's right. That, that piece mm -hmm. This portion would that be right of way. She there. owns that and so is the neighbor right there. No, not, this is public right of way. That, no. That's why it's here. If this were private, we wouldn't be involved at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you going to want? Uh, can I talk? Or? Oh, in a minute. Sorry. Oh, uh, minute. I'll go up there later. Hmm. Is that Any other questions? questions? I think just to clarify a few things, too. Um, uh, you know, in terms of notification and why things, you know, weren't noticed. Um, Generally, for the reason you were noticed in, in this case, I mean, is because of the sidewalk vacation piece in terms of you know being adjacent property owner and having impact for that. That's why you're noticed. Um, if this weren't the case, if they weren't looking to build the addition in this area, there would be no notification. We we don't notify when buildings, um, you know, somebody goes through the building process and adds on or remodels or do those other things. There, there, there's no notification process in the city for that. So in, in terms of this is why we're, we're here today. Um, you know, to, to Ms. Hummel's point, I think if we, and for the commissioners, I mean, if we are not to grant the vacation, um, obviously the addition could not be put over a public right of way, but it would not prohibit them from doing an addition. They just couldn't go over that vacation. So maybe they would do the addition to the south or to the north or some other configurations. Um, and just, you know, to kind of reemphasize what was brought up here today, too, I think in terms of the technical aspects of making sure things are set back from the proper boundaries, drainage, all those other things. I mean, we have a pretty tight review process in terms of making sure those are accounted for so that um, there are no impacts in terms of uh, stormwater mitigation, for example, that water doesn't leave <coughs> the site. It's to be managed on site. Um, so in terms of it, I just think the other piece with the, the vacation and leaving the other piece in there. Um, look, I mean, in terms of access and other things, you look at people that are on Ravenswood right now, you know, kids being able to get to the school or people being able to get other places on, on Crest Lane. Um, you know, it's a piece of infrastructure. We don't have a lot of sidewalks out in this area. Um, so for pet bike access, you know, making somebody on Ravenswood go up to Sunrise or down to Finger all the way around, you know, to get to the school, um, obviously this is a much more convenient and safer route for that. So it, look, it's a, it's a weird remnant mm -hmm. piece in terms of right away yeah. of things that happened, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but you know, we're here trying to work and make the, the best of the situation in terms of what's been granted. So just one quick follow up that based on your understanding of the, the process, mm -hmm. would the site plan have to basically have a net uh, drainage of uh, zero losses? So would they have to uh, compensate uh, for the same amount of drainage that they have now in their new site plan. Yes, so <coughs> we there's standards for certain year storms mm -hmm. that we right. have to meet certain targets mm -hmm. for both quantity and quality. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's also understanding, look, there's also times we get some crazy rain and mm -hmm. when you get, you know, two inches in an hour, there, there's no stormwater <laughs> facility in the, sure. the city that's going to be a handle that, but in terms of and they actually probably might have some more stringent requirements now because of when mm -hmm. the school was built, what oh, stormwater sure. requirements were then versus what they're now. They're probably going to be more stringent. I see. Mm -hmm. But the same plan is only going to address more. It's not going to address strong. Sure. Right. They have right. to maintain their stormwater. Yep. I got you. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate the school district did not do outreach to the neighbors. Like we tell people all the time when they apply things, right. call the neighbors first. They're going to have questions. So. But this is our portion of it, is to vacate the public way so that way they can put the expansion area on it. Um, we can take care of everything else <coughs> in the site plan process, but if there are major issues, then you can find with just the expansion in and of itself. 
you can just deny the vacation, right. but we don't have any other discourse besides that. You can't really condition a vacation right. sure. much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to make just okay, a few comments real quick. Okay. Not much. But. My name's Wayne Engelbert. I'm also the owner of that same home that Val was talking about. If you vacate uh, the whole thing, the schools, the building is going to come up to here. Mm -hmm. Are you telling me there will be no sidewalk from here to here? That's one of our conditions. And if not, the picture I think showed grass. And if this is open, kids are going to go through here. That's going to be all mud in this little area. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think just to be clear, they're required to maintain the sidewalk all the way through. Right. Yes. So wherever the building ends, the sidewalk has to go right up to right. it. Right. But that picture, if you and go back to that, around it, too. it, it, it says around existing around. walk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you're vacating this little section here, uh, you know what I'm trying to say, or they're going to put another little, little sidewalk in that section, like so. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but I, so I think what the here. point is, is no, no matter how much bigger the building gets, whatever is left it has to be sidewalk all the way up to the public port. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The vacated part is under that white building. And I can't tell if this is up to our lot line or not. I would hope not, but what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> Cry. Yeah. This is a good picture. I like, I like the way the design comes. Oh. May I still make a statement or? We're not anti the expansion of the school. We just want to make sure There's that the water, problem. the water problem in the community is engaged <coughs> with this yeah. decision. And without having any prior engagement by postponing the approval of that vacation, that would give us as property owners a chance to communicate with the school because calls have not been returned and it's been very difficult well to so what we're asking is to have a stay of this vacation on a temporary basis to discuss it to discuss it with the school but they're not returning calls anyway pardon they're not returning calls anyway you said no they are not good. If we, if we approve this vacation, then the school will have to submit a site plan yeah. which will address the drainage issues. Mm -hmm. That's part of the process. That's, that's the process, yes. So you would vacate first? We have to vacate first before they could consider an expansion <coughs> and submit the site plan. The site plan is a requirement for the expansion, which would, in that time, that would address the drainage issues. <coughs> so if that's the primary issue, then you want this vacation to happen so we can proceed with getting yep. the yep. water drainage. And a, a stay and or a, a hold wouldn't really accomplish much because mm -hmm. the communication <coughs> probably wouldn't exist anyway. But if once I submit the site plan, then the drainage issue will be addressed. Mm -hmm. But once that vacation is there, they can proceed regardless. They can proceed, but they have to submit a site plan. Which will address the drainage. Which would come back before this committee, or no? It would it's not. a different committee. Yeah. Yeah. It would not. The committee with the proper technical expertise to deal with it. Right. So, as property <coughs> owners, would we be notified at that time? Probably not. No. No, it's done as a staff level review. You're welcome to come in and look at the plans when they're available, but it's not. We're not going to notice anyone. It's rather common just for us to move through the site plan process. But you're welcome to come in. We can show them to you. The only time that we would notify is if there was something like a CUP or something out of the ordinary that the, the petitioner was looking for. Right. If they're, if they're within setbacks and they're, the, the drainage plan is good right. and uh, all of those things are working, then they're not going to yeah. notify neighbors. Yeah, correct. So then how would, you, how would we know as a community no. when that meeting will be? If it's not going to be here. If it's not going to be made out to us, telling us when it is, it won't be a public meeting. Oh, okay. But you're, you can, I give you my card. You can stay in contact with me, and I okay. let you know when it comes in. You can come take a look at it. It'll be public record at that point. Sir, you know, that looks pretty nice. If, if uh, there's no water problem, we'll be happy. <laughs> That's not going to be all, all black now. What do you mean? I'm Mike Stangle. I'm, I'm with Green Bay Schools. I'm the director of facilities there. Um, I, I just wanted to get up. I think there's been some misinformation out there. Um, 
first of all, I've only received one call um, from a Sharon Prosser. <coughs> I did send her these plans as soon as she called me. Um, the question, um, there was, you know, misinformation that when the city sent out the map showing the red box around the sidewalk, um, there was neighbors felt that that was the addition and that was going to go in, encroach onto their property, which is not correct. Okay. The addition is going to be 75, uh, 73 feet from the west property line, and the remaining of the, the remainder of the sidewalk will be maintained. Um, you know, is our intent is to allow that sidewalk to still be used for students that live west of the school to access the school, <coughs> and there would be sidewalks around there for them to continue on if they decide that they were going to just go around the school. Um, by um, the re the main reason that the school the addition is on here is if you are ever in Martin School, the hallways run this way, and the classrooms or along the, the sides. And so to continue those hallways and to have the, the, the correct traffic flow and the best usage of the building is to add on to this end. We, to add up to the south, we'd have to cut through classrooms and would really chop up the traffic flow and the use of, and we'd lo actually lose some classrooms by doing it that way. Um, as you know, was talked, I know that there will be, there's one storm drain that will be under the addition. The other two that are on site are will be maintained. And um, our civil engineers at the beginning is working on the stormwater management plans, which we submitted to this uh, city for approval. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Do you understand how important it would be to reach out to the neighborhood and let them, let them know this is going to happen. I mean, I was ready to vote against this simply as a matter of principle. I think this has been poorly handled. I'm really distressed. Extremely poorly handled. Thank you. I will uh, adopt that friendly amendment. Extremely <laughs> poorly handled. And I hope you might have taken a lesson from that. Let's see, at this time, we were looking at the, the approval to get the, the mm -hmm. um, I understand the, that as a the sidewalk vacation. What has been our policy is that when the plans are for, for full enough developed, um, we've had community open houses at the schools <coughs> and invited the neighbors mm -hmm. to come no. in and see what's going to take place. We haven't got to that point yet. Mm -hmm. um, our plans are not <coughs> developed enough. Um, they certainly look enough to me, and your explanation of why you aren't building to the south makes a great deal of sense. And had I heard that before, I would have felt very differently about the building to the west. So right. I, I, this I can is appreciate a public it. space. Yes. And once you brought it into this public realm, then people are learning about it. And they are not learning about it in an appropriate way. So pardon me for taking this opportunity to scold, but <laughs> I really hope that, yeah, I hope the lesson might be learned. Yes, Commissioner. Yes. Uh, as a clarification, this existing sidewalk right now comes all the way up to here. Correct. Okay. So now what you're going to actually abandon as far as the sidewalk goes is this piece from here to here. Correct. And then this is the sidewalk that's going to continue on. That's correct. And you're maintaining the, the integrity of having this sidewalk for use for tr safe transportation to school. Correct. And safety to school is more important than you know, so It's a very it's high priority. Yeah, it's a high, high priority. And uh, I went all through this with uh, the school out by Red Speth, and then I got those sidewalks in as fast as I could because it was important to have. But that, is everybody with me on that? I think you're all getting confused sure, as to where that sidewalk is. Yeah. 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 I'd like to know where the lot line is on that picture. <laughs> Pardon me? I'd like to know where our lot line is on that picture. Uh, that <laughs> remains to be seen because this is not drawn to scale, it's just a schematic. Okay. I would assume it's where that green shade changes right. color, yes. but so I'm not the that's right. right here. This is about 150 feet from this point to this point. Ah, okay. This is about half, this is about 75 or takes about half the distance. You're right, there's a difference here. Yeah. Okay. So same 75 same feet from yeah, that. Uh, but that parking lot is how far then from? That's pretty far away then. 
I, I don't know. It's not a. It's yeah, a perspective yeah, drawing. It's tough to know yeah. exactly yeah. what they're yeah. looking at. Okay. Looks good. I wish I had seen that before. So did you wish to speak? Yes. Do you need this? Yeah. My name is Todor Dimitrov, and I live on 639 Calvin Court. Mm -hmm. That's the property next to Vals, on the other side of the sidewalk. Uh, how to start it? The principle of that school, it's not a personal jump you can talk too easy. I'm sorry. The school itself, it's not good uh, owner of the property. They turn off the security lights every night. <coughs> the lights are there till the, the, the maintenance people are there. And they shut off the lights, which are the security lights, which are right here on that corner, right here on this corner, and right there. That's why we have graffiti several sure. times. That's, that's not perfect. I understand that. Now, with all that going around, can you turn the picture which I'm with a... There you go. Now, I don't know who is planning it and what they're planning it, but right here, this one is the street. That's my house. Every single day, when school comes and school goes, there is a lines of cars right here on the front, lines of cars right here, car every day park right here on the corner. Right here is a fire, uh, fire, fire hydrant, right here. Mm -hmm. Several times I complain to the school, remove, speak with those people. The principal turned out and told me, I didn't make you to buy this house, it's your problem. That what was the answer of one of the people which one this gentleman works with. I, I sympathize with your plight and believe me, that's all in the city, but that's not pertinent to the city. But think, that's not, I understand we need to extend the school. That's yeah. perfectly right with me. Right here, it's a, the school is on higher ground than my house. Even now, my house is almost underwater on that side. Mm -hmm. If they take right here the drain, the drain right there, and the drain on that side, with all this stuff which under the same, who is going to guarantee me they will make sure everything is right by my house? Or I have to swim in my backyard? Because I have the opportunity, uh, as a taxpayer, to speak in front of you now. Yeah, but sir, we're, we're, not, we're not equipped, nor can we make a decision on this is not, this is not our really right. <coughs> we're, we're off on completely on a different tangent. We're not addressing that at all. The only thing we're addressing is the possibility of changing that sidewalk, and we can't address these other things. And this man over here just told us that they're coming up with the plans, and that'll be up to them to come up with the drainage. And that's not even going to come back here, because this is just a planning commission. This is not DPW. I do understand that. Yeah. So My point is... So whatever you're saying right now, you're... And I just want to be as acquainted as I can. This is whatever you're discussing right now, you're... Personally, you're actually wasting your own time and ours because we just can't make a judgment on that. Yeah. I don't waste my time because I... You're at the wrong place for it, though. Well, I'm not going to have opportunity to speak, to speak a, again because I, I guess everything oh, happens yes, on yes. the... Yes, you are. He's guaranteed, he's a guarantee to call you in. And why he's getting involved is just on him because he shouldn't even... And what I can change on that? Pardon me? What I can change on that? The, somebody has to guarantee me this one is going to be planted better than now. Because now it's not planned at all. And you're extending it with about 15, 20 rooms that's cool, where the, the traffic area on that side, it's so poor, even now. I cannot park in days on my driveway, and I've been shown middle finger and stuff like that for people which are not going to the school. I understand what you're going through here, because I was an alderman, and I was at Boyd mm -hmm. School, and they built that. And we had parking problems that you cannot <coughs> even believe, but it had to be worked out with the school system internally to make that work through the alderman, which I was the alderman. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how I got involved in it, but that's as well, far as it had to be the alderman. The alderman yeah. was informed, but he, he's on vacation well, for the, today's meeting. He can't be on permanent vacation. I uh, understand that. <laughs> I spoke with the principal, she sent me the caps. I, I think that I, I want to give you two things to take away from this meeting, because I don't want you to just feel like you're yeah. wasting your time. Um, well, I've been told already. I, I, I know, <laughs> but I don't want you to feel like you're wasting your time. So, option one is, uh, you know, there's a different department that handles parking. 
Um, if, yeah. if the parking is wrong on that street for the, for the neighborhood, um, you can go to them and argue that the parking should be changed and there'll be an assessment. There's no parking there. The parking's not permitted, period? And people park anyways? They, they park yes. everywhere where they want. Yeah, don't call the school, call the police. That's the police, that's right. Yeah, let them, let them come up. They're, believe me, I, I live downtown. The parking attendants are willing to write tickets. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so oh, yeah. maybe after some tickets, parents will take away cars. I don't know. So that's one option for you. Number two, uh, if not, I don't want to create, I don't want us to create the impression that the school is not, doesn't have a check. So they have to submit a site plan, but it's not automatically approved because the school wants it. The city has engineers who are, pro their professional job is to make sure that the drainage is appropriate for the area and to be held to a standard. So just because the school wants it to be a certain way, if the city's engineers <coughs> determine this doesn't work for drainage, mm -hmm. then the answer is no. And they're back to square one before they even dig the first hole for the expansion of the school. So there is a check and uh, I believe that Paul is gonna willing to keep you apprised of those plans if you reach out to him. So this isn't a waste of your time. No, I, I, I get what you're saying, Jerry, but yeah. I, I don't want you to think it's a waste of your time. In this community, I have rights to speak Absolutely. and I have rights to be informed. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I'm so paying, I gave you that paying it every way. year, every year I'm paying it my taxes, I want to be heard. And I want somebody to take care of it because the school is thinking it just for that part right here. Yeah. That's what they care. They don't care anything about that part right there. Because as I've been taught from the principal, she told me, screw yourself. You yeah. bought that house, it's your fault. The school has yeah. no, no control over that part, by the way. That's, that's what we've been taught, and that's why I want to be heard this time, because I bought the house 2009, and since then, with the principal which is there, I cannot speak with her. I, I spoke with her, she sent me the caps. Community officer came asking me why you want to take pictures of the kids. I said, Are you insane? I told the principal to send that letter to the. the they said every year, every month, they said every month a uh, letter to the parents. I said, Could you involve there to, to don't park like idiots there and to be careful for their kids? I said, Do you want me to take pictures of the people which are doing that or what do you want me to do? She sent me community card. I, you know, I apologize if I take your time, but I think no, I, for I, the I years understand, I understand that comment because you okay. took it entirely wrong, okay? Well, I, uh, stop it. I, I'm telling you some solutions. Okay. <laughs> and your main solution, do you have parking signs on that street that says no There is no, no par parking signs, no anything. There is no parking signs. But who normal That's person is going to... That's step number one, you get some no parking signs on there. Who's going to park so on the door? Well, there's a parking site up there. Can I call the police? Call the police come and take it up. I can talk to you after the meeting. Sure. I really appreciate that. Sure. Thank you. Um, can I just make one more um, comment about the parking? No, there's. Okay. Can I go to the stand then? He can. Yes, go ahead. So, my name is Blagoy Dimitrov. I also live at 639 Calvin Court. I'm his son. Um, our neighbor, Val, uh, she's actually called the cops on that subject before. Um, the cops pretty much said that that's up to the, correct me if I'm wrong, that's up to the school to um, fix that problem. Yep. Am I yep. correct and the on kids. that? And, and again, um, I, yep. I appreciate your play, but the parking issue yep. is totally not. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, 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 I, 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 I completely don't understand don't even, I just don't even pay to say anything about it. Yeah, no, 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 I just wanted to say something about that. And then, um, can I After. show you the diagram on here? Sure. What I'll be getting at. Because on here it's not shown. Um, so we have a, it's not shown on here because these aren't updated. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a pool currently right here. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have a fence that runs, I believe, I forget how many feet away from it's our property be, line. It's got to be so many feet where you yep. can park here. Yeah, so then the pro property line, right. with that yeah. vacation zone, we would have to move our fence. That's inaccurate. I'm sorry. That map is not very good. I'm okay. never going to make another map again in my life. I think <laughs> it's only the, the actual sidewalk area. That was just to show which portion. This is just okay. a, that's just a schematic. That was just kind of putting a circle over the top. It's really just the exact sidewalk. It's definitely off. I'm never making it. So then just to clarify. <laughs> property that you get. No property at all. Oh, I see. No imminent domain. Yeah, you thought, you thought there was no <laughs> Yeah, because if, if we put out your fence here. 
if it was going to be like said that, it would have been right in my bedroom. Right. We would have had to be asking them, hey, what are you going to be doing to reimburse us? And no, all no, that they, stuff. they don't want to get into that. There's okay. a whole legal process called takings that yeah. would have to occur for that, for a private citizen yep. property to be taken. Yep. And then my second thing, if you would uh, be willing to go back to the school schematic. Actually, quick, go back to the other one. I'm just checking if there is. Um, all right, never mind. There isn't anything. So then for this one, um, originally by the people digging the holes, they said that it was going to be 110. You clarified saying 70, 73 feet? Um, 75. Yeah. Um, with that being 75 feet out this way, and I'm not sure if you know yet or not, um, will the parking lot be, like, is this about the same sizes that it would be in real life, uh, veering out that much? The idea of this is to give you, to give us an idea of how it will look. We, okay. I don't have those dimensions. Okay. I don't know if it, they're on the site plan, but I don't even know if that was those submitted, yet. submitted yet. No, okay. So this is just preliminary. Okay. Um, and then another thing um, that Mr. I forget your name, um, there are the always that do run this way. I did go to that. I did go to that yeah. school. Um, there are always that run vertically also. Um, right here is their library because the always run kind of like a rectangle around here, and. Um, it's also the same with, with the other side of the school. There's hallways that run this way, then there's a hallway that runs this way. I'm wondering, um, yes, it would make a little bit of sense for the hallways, since the hallways do run this way, but that would only mean that there's two entrances to this building, whereas if you would put it on this side, there would be three entrances to that building. Um, and this is kind of me speaking a little bit more towards in your area, not really yeah. towards you guys. Yes. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying this right now just so I know that I'm probably never going to have the same meeting again as I can with everybody in the same room. Um, if a possibility for you guys to rethink that um, for potentially putting the building on this side because that will be bringing down um, proper property value if we ever do wish to sell our house because who would want to look outside their backyard and then see a big brick building? And if this does come out 73 feet, as you said, uh, that would mean that there's only about 40 or 50 feet between my property line and the school. There's about 73, 73. 73, I'm sorry. Somewhere in there, right? I'm now. sorry. Right, so Stephanie, go back to that slide previously. So this distance is about 150. Oh, I thought it was The addition's coming out about another 75 mm -hmm. or about half of that. So okay. that's roughly the same. But still, <coughs> hunting the same thing, who would want to look out their backyard window and see that right in a lot closer than it is right now? Yeah, I and mean, there's opportunities yep. for landscaping and mitigating some of that. There's mm -hmm. some foundation plantings that are going to possibly occur. So, mm -hmm. again, making contact with the school district to <coughs> yep. some of the plans. Are. And I know that there was a lot of other neighbors <coughs> that wanted to come to this um, just to talk with you guys. Um, that San Sandy, I believe her name was, her husband's had carpal term carpal tunnel surgery, so she couldn't make it, um, so on and so forth. But I just wanted to bring that up with you guys because that I really don't feel that that part of the building is a good fit for that location right there. Thanks. Yep. Motion to close the floor. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Mm-hmm. Second by Commissioner Miller, just hold the floor. Aye. 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 Any further discussion? No, I feel we can contain a motion. Uh, motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Hanson to approve the request for revocation. Any further discussion? Hearing none, the chair would ask that you approve the vote. Thank you. Thank you.
It has passed six to one with one abstaining. Thank you. Okay, the next item. Next item, item you six. Yes. Yeah. Consideration with possible action on a request for a variance from section 14-727 of the subdivision and planning ordinance you want me to grab that, that allows for a land division yeah. with all the frontage on a public street at 2405 West Mason Street, submitted by Garrett Gator. Thank you. Um, we looked at this area recently. There's another item on the agenda with it as well. Um, this property is again West Mason. We just did the CUP here. Um, a little bit larger context, the Chili's is right here, and this is a large pair of parcel that we're going to be discussing. So the variance request is based off of this CSM. Lot 1 is proposed right off of the frontage road. Um, it currently does not have enough square footage based on the existing zoning, but it's up for a rezoning to a zoning district that would have the proper square footage. So in theory, that won't need any sort of a variance request. If it does, the applicant's been advised that they would have to come back for a separate request based on that one. Lot two is allowed by rights with their square footage and frontage. So what we're looking for is lot three, which is down here. A um, little difficult to tell with all the different lines and colors, but this is our platted right of way that already exists, which is that bright green. And then this kind of paler color is our area development plan for that area. So this is ADP 21. This lot three, which they're proposing here without any street frontage, which we require, was created when this area was platted. So the plat that we approved at the city literally split this off without any consideration for the fact we were creating a lot without any frontage, with the assumption that more things would be developed and that things would infill and that we wouldn't have this situation going forward. Um, there are some pretty major issues with the land that's back here. There's a lot of wet areas. There's been some false starts on developments. So basically it's left this tiny portion of a parcel connected to something that's not connected to anymore. So with the variance request, they're asking that lot three be a lot without frontage, um, which I think is a fair ask considering we created that situation. Yeah. Um, we do have a couple different conditions co tied to this. Um, we really don't like to see anything that doesn't actually have built frontage for a lot because it creates a lot of problems for future planners and future developers. Um, so hopefully to negate some of those, these conditions will do that. Um, the first would be that um, this is only for lot three, not lot one as discussed. And we are have the condition that if there's any changes to area development plan number 21 or to any future plats, that there has to be some sort of frontage dedication or the combination of this parcel with the separate parcel to assure that it does have some sort of frontage in the future. Um, we are also proposing that lot three be changed to all lot one as part of their CSM application so that way it cannot be built upon until there is that frontage that's available. So the creation of the lot would be allowed through this variance request as an out lot so that way it's an unbuildable lot until the time comes in which there is actual public street frontage there. Thank you. The end. <laughs> <laughs> no discussion? Moved we'll over the floor. Second. There was a motion by Commissioner Potosky, a second by Corporate Stacks to open the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Do you wish to speak? On I'll talk as short as possible. If you have any questions, I'm here to help. <laughs> Garrett's still in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and are there and I'm getting an answer paid. Would you close the floor? Definitely. Second. <laughs> Read the map. Thank you. Okay, we have no questions apparently. So we have a motion by Commissioner Hanson, a second by Alder Corpus Tax to close the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Wispisky, a second by Commissioner Hanson to close, uh, to uh, okay, approve. approve the recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> Here get Wispisky. It's the long name. <laughs> um, any further discussion? Hearing uh, right none. The chair would ask that you cast your vote. Unanimously approved. It's been approved. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay, next item is. Item 7, consideration with possible action on an appointment to the Downtown Business Improvement District Board, nominated by the bid and approved by Mayor Schmidt. 
Uh, this is a formality. The planning commission is charged with appointing these uh, through you guys onto city council. These are recommended by the bids themselves and the mayor. We have one nomination for our downtown bid, which is Susan, who represents the Brown, Brown County Library. So her resume was attached, I believe, to your staff report, and we are recommending approval. And she has very nice qualifications. I move approval. Second. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Bremer, a second by Commissioner Petrovsky to approve the recommendation. Any further discussion? Very none. I would ask that you pass your good bad. Good bad. Approved. Seventeen. Seventeen. We stayed there. Has been approved. Thank you. Item eight. Canceling on that day. Consideration with possible action on a request by staff to amend zoning ordinance section related to the Landmarks Commission. So as you may remember, we did a major update to our historic preservation ordinance in August, I think it was. Um, we then submitted our revised ordinance to the State Historic Preservation Office to get served by local government status. They came back with a couple recommendations for our changes. And by recommendations, I mean we have to do them or else we can't have CLG status. <laughs> so most of these are just technical updates, yep. um, fines, how we mail people, and we updated some of our staffing. So. Number four is just to say that Kevin can say who can do all the things that we can do instead of old Bill Lockery's position. Mm -hmm. So all these are pretty straightforward, and we are recommending approval of them. Motion approved. Approve. Second. second. <laughs> yeah, we have a motion by Commissioner Krasbisky, <laughs> a second by Alder Corpus Dax to approve. <coughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, the chair would ask that you cast your vote. It is approved. Thank you. Item 9. Referral from Alderman John Vanderlees, District 11, regarding the creation of an area development plan. Last one. So this is already an area development plan. That's what we just discussed. It's ADP number 21. Um, there's been some renewed interest in some of the properties that are associated with this ADP. Um, his request to create one is not necessary as the one that exists, but we would like you guys to refer this to staff so that way we can work with the property owners as there are typically costs associated with the creation or amendment of an ADP. The city usually doesn't take those on, so it's typically on the property owners to do such, but we'd like to work with them on what kind of property lines, developments, and road proposals. Motion to serve to staff. <laughs> second. second. We have a motion by Commissioner Wyspiski, a second by Commissioner Petrovsky to refer to staff. Um, I do have a question. Yeah. Is there any, um, plans or to do anything with this area development plan in the near future? There are a lot of very big dreams from the people who own the property there, but we're not I'm sure what is actually viable. It's very wet land, so we need I to get a delineation yeah. done. So and then from there, we would amend the road pattern to more closely reflect where the land's actually wet and then what we already have on the ground. But as far as you know, there's nothing in the near future, probably. I mean, as fast as we can work. Yeah, well. Yeah. I think where we're at is, you know, <laughs> looking at these potential short-term investments, you know, on the frontage road and Hobart and things like that, but they only pay off if there's a long-term payback from opening up that land to development, but just we haven't touched on it so long, we don't know what's possible. So just a quick aside, I think it's what we're doing, like I-43, expanding the business park. Yep. We'd love to expand it, but there's a lot of wetland out there, so we got to figure out what we have, you know, with much work, and I think we're doing the same thing here. Okay. The reason I ask is I love on Springdale. So, oh. so that's we'll let you know. That's <laughs> <the answer. laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Make people notify you. Right. <laughs> okay, so again, let's just we do a motion and a second to approve the uh, to refer to staff. Yep. Yes. Um, <laughs> everybody, please vote. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Informational director's report. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last time, council <laughs> fifteen. Uh, most important, Lisa Hansen was reappointed to the planning commission. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know. I can go on talking. Didn't even know. She'll be here for three more years. Oh my god, I didn't even know. February first. Wait, it wasn't three years. Look at all that great pay. Lots of debate. Lots of debate. Some vacations and then everything else from the last planning commission meeting was approved. 
this When is the next meeting? Because it says on here the next meeting is February 11th. That's but today. I think that's not probably accurate. Uh, <laughs> 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 so it's a long industry piece. 25th. Yeah. So it would be the 25th. 25th. Two weeks. Right. So Sorry. Right. Two weeks. 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 Two Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Hansen, and second by Alder Corpus staff to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, yeah, I suggest that we could probably work on 